Chapter 1, A New Start Naruto looked around the small village he and Uro Senen had just entered, like most of the villages he had been to in Hai no Kuni, Fire Country, the buildings were all made out of a mixture of wood and bricks, and were modeled in a western style with flat rooftops and square architecture. Most of the buildings were shops that sold various wares and goods, which was obvious when Naruto observed the numerous people that were milling around looking in the windows. It had only been about a week since Naruto had left with Uro Senen on this training trip and the two had already been in two other cities in Hai no Kuni. So what are we going to be doing here Uro Senen? Naruto asked as he looked up at the larger male. Jiraiya was a fairly tall man, standing at about 6 feet 5 inches making him taller than most of the people in Konoha with the exception of Kakashi. He had white hair that spiked up before going down to about mid-back, it was held in place by a hideo 8 with two horns and the kanji for oil on it. He was wearing a green gi under a red vest and it wouldn't get a sandals rather than the standard shinobi sandals. Jiraiya looked down at his student and scowled, what have I told you about respecting your elders Gaki? Naruto shrugged, you'll get my respect when I feel you've earned it. So far all you've done is go to whore houses or peek on women and I have yet to actually learn anything from you. Jiraiya sighed at his student's rather apathetic attitude, ever since they had left Konoha Naruto had. Changed. He had become a lot more quiet than the loud mouth the Senen had met during the Chunin exams, in fact he hadn't spoken more than a few words since they left Konoha, it was like the loud mouth had suddenly vacated the boy's head and this new person took his place. Most of the time Naruto stared at nothing and seemed to be in deep thought, Jiraiya was not sure what was bothering his apprentice but figured that he would find out what was wrong in time. All right, all right, the toad sent inside, I have to meet a contact here who has some valuable information for me. After this is done I'll begin training you, how does that sound? Naruto nodded, that's fine. Jiraiya frowned at his godson's lack of enthusiasm but left it alone for now as he headed off. Naruto walked around the town, not really bothering to pay attention to where he was going at the moment. Truth was he had been thinking a lot, mostly about himself and how he had not really taken his training seriously. When he was in the academy he had been more concerned with playing pranks to get attention, which had seriously hampered his ability to learn. Of course half of the problem was that by the time he had found a teacher willing to actually teach him rather than try to sabotage his training, Naruto was so far ingrained in his pranking and loudmouth tendencies that it had simply become a habit. He shook his head and sighed, despite that it still wasn't an excuse for not bothering to learn when he was able to. Had he actually applied himself to learn what he could he may have been able to keep Sasuke from leaving the village. There was another of his problems, Sasuke Uchiha had been someone he had considered a brother. He had always thought that even with the small rivalry they had going that they were still friends and always would be, that feeling had been dashed when Sasuke plunged the Chidori's into his chest not once but twice. Naruto was no longer sure if he could keep his promise to Sakura by returning the boy, not that it would matter anyways. Naruto was beginning to doubt that Sasuke would ever willingly return, even if Naruto forced him to come back, he doubted Team 7 would ever be the same. Naruto shook his head of the morbid thoughts, now wasn't the time to be dwelling on such things. Sasuke's defection had opened Naruto's eyes to the reality of his situation. He needed to get stronger, he had to train and try his hardest to become a real shinobi, not the loud brat who could not even bring back someone he considered a brother. As he was now Naruto was lacking in every aspect of being a shinobi, sure he had the Rasengan, Spiraling Sphere, and Cage Bushins, Shadow Clones, but that was really it. In every battle he had fought so far if it were not for the Kyubi, Naruto knew he would have died. During the battle on the bridge, in the Nami no Kuni, Land of Waves, he had used it to fight Haku. During his fight with Orochimaru in the Forest of Death he had been forced to use it. His fight with Gara, his fight with Sasuke, every major battle he had been in he had used it. Add on that he could not even use the Rasengan without the aid of a clone, he did not have proper control of his chakra and no set taijutsu style, or rather he just swung until he hit something. Naruto knew he had a lot of problems to fix. Looking up he found himself standing in front of a store that appeared to sell shinobi clothing, Naruto looked at his own attire. His bright orange track suit had been with him for as long as he could remember, not because he wanted to wear it. No despite the fact that orange was his favorite color and was good for getting attention, the only reason he wore it was because it was the only thing he could afford. All the stores in Konoha had blacklisted him, making it nearly impossible to get a decent set of clothing. Hell the only food he could even afford was ramen which was why he ate it all the time. Even these clothes he had were costly, the man who sold them to him making him pay three times the price most people would spend for normal clothes. Deciding that if he wanted to become a real shinobi he should look like a real shinobi, Naruto walked into the store. The shop itself was fairly standard, 
There were many racks in the store with different styles of shinobi clothes in various colors. There was also a few areas that sold weapons, most of which were the standard kunai, shuriken, ninja wire and basic ceiling scroll. Unlike Konoha this was not a ninja village so they did not have any specialty clothing and weapons. Naruto began to walk around the store to see what he might like, he looked at various forms of pants first. He wanted them to be in a dark color, looking at a few of the different styles and colors he decided to buy several sets of dark blue cargo styled pants. They had several pockets that looked like they were designed to hold various scrolls and were of a sturdy material that would not wear down. The next thing he went to were the shirts, looking through them he went with a dark blue and black colors. Buying several sets of both sleeveless and long sleeve shirts so that he would have some variety before he moved on, looking to see if there was anything else he might want. He eventually bought several other things, a pair of black fingerless gloves with metal plates on the back, a pair of black combat boots with steel-toed tips and a ceiling scroll so he could carry it all. Walking up to the cash register which had an old man sitting at it, Naruto set the clothes down. The old man looked at him and began to tally up the price, that's quite a lot of stuff you bought young man, the total will come up to 4,000 yen. Naruto reached into his pants pocket and pulled out Gama-chan, his frog wallet. Opening it up he looked to see how much he had, it was not well known but Naruto was despite not looking like it was very stingy when it came to money. Living on the streets and having to be careful where he bought stuff and how much he bought, Naruto had been taught the value of cash. Right now he had 6,500 yen, he would be using about two-thirds of his savings, but in Naruto's eyes it was worth it. Taking out the necessary amount Naruto gave it to the old man. Excuse me but do you have a place I could change? Naruto asked, using a more respectful voice than he ever had before. Yes right over there, the old man pointed to a small changing stall that was somewhat hidden in the corner. Thanks, Naruto replied moving over to the stall. No problem young man. Naruto went into the stall and changed, opting to go for the sleeveless shirt instead of a long sleeve one right now. He looked himself over in the mirror and nodded in satisfaction, sealing the rest of his clothes inside of the scroll he bought. Walking out of the store Naruto created a cage bushin and told it to go find Jiraiya and tell him he was going to get some food. Walking around Naruto eventually found a small stand that seemed to offer a variety of different foods, Naruto eventually settled on Damburi with gyudon, beef, and began to eat. A few minutes later Naruto blinked as the memories of his clone finding Jiraiya drunk off his ass with several girls hanging off the man hit him. What was that? Naruto wondered as he tried to figure out what had just happened. He had never had that happen when he made a clone before, of course normally when he made clones he would spam them out as if they were going out of style, so maybe he just never noticed. As he ate he absently wondered if this could be used for training or if he only retained the memories of the clones when they dispelled. He would ask Uro Senen when the man found him. A little while later said man walked into the stand and sat down next to him, he ordered a small bowl of ramen and waited for it to come. When it did he began eating for a bit before deciding to speak, we'll be staying the night here, tomorrow we're going to leave early and start your training. Naruto nodded, speaking of training, I noticed that I gained the memory of my clone when it dispelled. Ho ho, Jiraiya said with a small hint of surprise and pride, so you found out the secrets of the cage Bushin eh? Naruto turned to face Jiraiya with an incredulous look, so you knew about this? Of course I knew kid, Jiraiya snorted, I've been waiting to see when you would figure it out yourself. Naruto nodded again, deciding not to bother getting bent out of shape about over not being told, do you think I would be able to use it for training? Jiraiya looked thoughtful for a moment, that could work. With your reserves you could easily learn things in months that many others would take years to get down. Though I imagine there would be some drawbacks to this method of training. Like what? Naruto asked. Jiraiya spent the next hour explaining the drawbacks of using Cage Bushin to train. XXXXXXXXXXXX. One month later. Naruto grunted as he came up and did another set of push ups, he had been going at them for about an hour now and was just about finished. It had been a month since he had learned the Cage Bushin method and Naruto's training had been progressing far faster than most people could ever hope to. Every day Naruto would create about 200 clones, half of them would go through the taijutsu kata that Jiraiya was trying to teach him. The style was called Haming Tori no Ken, hummingbird style, and relied on high-speed attacks that were designed to inflict significant damage on the weak spots of the body, such as joints. The other half would work on chakra control, which was easily Naruto's worst subject with genjutsu being a close second. Naruto had been told by Jiraiya that because of his massive reserves, doing things like genjutsu and medical jutsu would be impossible. However if he got his control up, 
Naruto should at the very least be able to dispel high-level genjutsu even if he could not cast them. So his clones would do a mixture of exercises, most of them would run around on a body of water with several large rocks sticking to different areas of the body while balancing senbone or kunai on his fingers. He hoped that he could at least get onbu level chakra control by the end of the training trip. While his clones were doing that Naruto would work on the physical aspect, training his body to withstand high-speed combat. Every morning Naruto would wake up and do his workout, currently he would do a 15-mile run, 400 push-ups, 400 sit-ups, 200 pull-ups, 1,000 squats, 500 kicks and 500 punches, each week he would add 5 miles and 100 more of each exercise. He had gotten inspiration for the training regimen from his friend Rock Lee, a boy who could only use taijutsu. While Naruto was considered an ninjutsu specialist he had strong hopes that he could also match Lee and Guy in taijutsu. Finishing his push-ups Naruto started on his sit-ups. A little ways away Jiraiya watched his apprentice work with a frown. While he was proud of the boy for pushing himself so hard he was also worried. Naruto had been doing nothing but training for the entire month they had started, the boy would only stop to eat and sleep, though Jiraiya was positive the boy was only getting half as much sleep as he should. Jiraiya's original decision to take Naruto on this training trip was to focus on helping him use Kyuubi's chakra, but with the boy had been adamant on learning to fight without it that Jiraiya had decided to focus on actual shinobi training before going to that. While the blonde had improved a good deal, Going from mid Genin to about high Chunin level, he would eventually crash if he kept at it. Naruto. Jiraiya called out, I want you to stop for a second and come here. Naruto looked up and nodded, finishing his set he stood and made his way towards Jiraiya. What do you need Jiraiya sensei? That was another thing that was different about their relationship, whenever they were training Naruto would always refer to him as sensei. Of course once they were finished it was right back to Urosenin, but at least it was progress. I want to know what's eating you. Jiraiya said narrowing his eyes as Naruto looked away. I don't know what you're talking about sensei, Naruto said, though he still wouldn't make eye contact. Don't give me that crap, Jiraiya scowled, you've been quiet ever since we left Konoha. In fact you haven't been your typical loudmouth self since you got out of the hospital now that I think about it, I've rarely ever heard you speak more than two words unless it was about training. Now spill it or I won't train you anymore. Naruto winced at the obvious threat, for a moment he was silent before he sat down with a sigh. It's just. I realize just how badly I've handicapped myself all this time. When I was younger no one would ever teach me anything, I had to learn to read and write on my own because the lady who owned the orphanage said demons don't deserve to learn how to do human things and when I went to the academy it was the same way. I thought that since the old man was letting me go there I would finally be able to learn and show everyone what an awesome ninja I could be if given the chance. Naruto closed his eyes, that never happened. I was always sent out during important lessons or assignments, when they taught us taijutsu I was taught incorrect stances, the list for the things they did go on. I eventually decided to stop paying attention, I played pranks so people would notice me. And by the time I found someone who was willing to teach me it was too late, I didn't care anymore. Sure I always said I would be Hokage but I never really worked at it, I want to change that. Jiraiya sighed as he realized what the problem was, he should have known that Sarutobi sensei would not have been able to protect the boy like he should have. Jiraiya should have been far more adamant more about taking Naruto with him after the Kyuubi's attack, he was sure that a life on the move would have been better than a life of hatred. I suppose I can understand that, Jiraiya said, but you're still going to burn out if you keep this up. I know, Naruto sighed, but I can't help it. I want to become better, I don't want to be considered the dobi, the loser anymore. The toad Senen looked at his godson for a long while before smile broke out on his face, all right then, get back to your training and I'll make sure you become the best shinobi in Konoha if not the entire elemental nations. Naruto grinned before running back to his spot where he began exercising again. XXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXX
Informant my ass, Naruto mumbled as he began walking around town. He didn't really bother taking in the sights, having seen one city in fire country, he noticed that they all kind of looked the same. Instead he looked around at all the people, even though he had been out of Konoha for over a month, actually having people smile at him rather than glare was a novel experience. He still was not really sure how to react, but he would occasionally return someone's smile with a tentative one of his own. As he was wandering he noticed something else that made him curious, he had passed several groups of girls his own age, and not one to be rude to well, anyone really, he had offered them a smile. This had the unexpected side effect of the girls doing two things, the first was for the girls to blush at him, the second was to huddle in whatever group they were in and start giggling while looking at him. He really was not sure how to react to this, having never had experience with girls aside from getting his face to cave in whenever Sakura hit him, he had not even touched a member of the opposite sex before, he did not count Sonate Ba Chan, Shizun Ne Chan or Ayame Ne Chan, at least not without bodily harm done to him. And so he was left confused as he made his way around town, looking for a stand that would sell him some good ramen. After several minutes of searching, he finally found a stand that looked promising, he walked in and sat down at one of the stools. At the sound of his entrance the chef turned around and spotted him, what'll you have kid? Naruto frowned as he looked over the menu, hmm. I'll have five orders of your miso ramen, four orders of your chicken ramen and two orders of your beef ramen to start. The man behind the counter just looked at him for a second, wondering if this kid had some kind of mental deficiency. Um. Are you sure you can eat that much kid? He asked. Naruto looked at him with his newly created do you know who the fuck you're talking to look, of course I'm sure, if I wasn't I wouldn't have ordered it. The man just looked at him before shrugging, well if you say so. One hour and twenty-three bowls of ramen later, Naruto left the stand leaving a very happy ramen chef and the feeling of his wallet several pounds lighter. He decided to continue his walk through the city before finding a nice quiet place to train, he wasn't too worried about getting lost, Jiraiya somehow always knew how to find him even when the man was drunk as a skunk. As he continued Naruto noticed he was getting more and more of those looks from the female population. He was not sure what they meant but the looks had the odd effect of making him swell with pride and at the same time want to run away screaming. Though, he could have sworn he had seen those looks before. He shrugged the thought off as he looked at some of the stores, wanting to see if they may have anything interesting. He didn't go into any of the stores right now, since he could not see anything interesting, instead he satisfied himself with window shopping to see if there is something he might want. As he was looking into one of the stores he felt someone tapping him on the shoulder. Turning around he found himself staring at a girl around his age, she had long light brown hair, green eyes and a decent figure for someone who he recognized as a civilian. She was giving him the same smile with that light redness across the cheeks that he had noticed other girls giving him as he had walked around the city. Um. Naruto was really not sure what to say, he had next to no experience with women so he was completely unsure what to do. He decided to be. Quieter than he usually was, after all Sakura would hit him when he was loud, so there was no reason to assume other females would not do that either. Can I help you? He asked. He picked up several giggles coming from behind the girl, turning his head slightly he saw a group of them just a little ways away looking at the two of them. He did not know why but this instantly had his danger senses going haywire, telling him to run and never look back. The girl continued to give him a small smile, actually me and my friends were just wondering. If you wanted to go shopping with us? Naruto blinked, opened his mouth, closed his mouth and blinked again. No one had ever asked him to do something like this with them before, it went without saying that he was stumped on what to do. What? He asked in a voice that sounded like he had not heard what the girl had asked. The girl talking to him could not help but think he looked extremely cute with his confused look, she's starting giggling again, I asked if you wanted to go shopping with us? Naruto for reasons he did not know, felt his cheeks become inflamed and he was positive he looked like a tomato, this was confirmed when the girl and her friends in the distance started giggling again. Naruto thought the giggling was kind of cute, yet at the same time felt it was the single most terrifying thing in existence. He was tempted to just run and hope these girls could not find him again to ask him, yet at the same time he had never actually spent time with anyone his own age outside of the academy and missions. Sure, I'd love to with you, Naruto said as he gave the girl his megawatt smile. After all it would be nice to hang out with people his own age just to be with them instead of on a mission or training. That was the wrong thing to say. Naruto was unsure what had happened, but he soon found himself being dragged by the arm to nearly every store in the city. The girls did not do any shopping, however they had decided to see what kind of clothes he liked to see them in. Apparently they wanted a guy's opinion or something, 
he wasn't quite sure since they were talking so fast it was next to impossible to understand them. In any case, every store they went to, the girls would grab a bunch of clothes, change into them and model for him while asking for his opinion. Naruto having never done anything even remotely like this before was completely unsure what to say to them, instead he found himself spending that time blushing and trying to speak, only for no words to actually come out, or for his words to sound more like he was choking on a piece of food. Unfortunately for him, rather than irritate them, this seemed to endear the group of females he was hanging out with even further. They began calling him cute and asking him things like if he had a girlfriend, one was even bold enough to ask if she could touch his whiskers. Luckily help arrived, as he was walking down the street, two of the girls having somehow latched onto each of his arms, Naruto noticed a large dust cloud being kicked up and coming his way. He and the girl stopped and watched as Jiraiya passed with a horde of barely clothed women coming at him with bats, pitchforks and many other devices used to maim and cripple, all the while yelling about perverts and getting what he deserved. As soon as they passed Naruto got out of the girl's grip and turned to them, er. Sorry for cutting this short but it looks like I have to save my perverted sensei from his rightful execution. With nary another word Naruto was gone, leaving the girls to watch the second, smaller cloud of dusty maid. Naruto found Jiraiya just as he assumed he would have, lying unconscious and twitching as the women walked away after beating him. Walking up the blonde toad the spastically twitching toad Senen, a second later said Senen jumped up and dusted himself off as if nothing had even happened. I knew you weren't going to be meeting any contact Uro sensei Naruto said once the man was up, stupid pervert why can't you ever just act normal? Normal is overrated Gaki, Jiraiya exclaimed as a smirk formed on his face, besides, you have no right to talk. I saw all those females you were with. I have to say I'm quite impressed, his smirk turned into a lecherous grin as he saw Naruto's face turn beet red. I it's not like that you goddamn pervert, Naruto shouted, pointing a finger at his sensei. They asked me to go shopping with them, and I was just trying to be nice. Oh ho, so they came on to you eh? Jiraiya wiped away a fake tear, my student is growing up so fast, to have women asking him to spend with them. Shut up, shut up shut up shut up. Naruto shouted, covering his ears. Now don't be like that Gaki, Jiraiya said with a grin, it's quite impressive what you did. In fact I'm so impressed that I'm going to give you some tips on how to please women. As the two went to the hotel Jiraiya had rented before deciding to do his research, Naruto was forced to listen to his sensei giving him tips on how to please a woman. He tried not to listen to the man, knowing that all he was talking about was some perverted crap that he did not want to know, however he somehow found himself listening anyways. Half of it he didn't even understand, having been sent out of class during the sexual education course he did not actually know about sex, even his infamous Oroki no Jutsu, sexy Jutsu, was merely the by-product of having seen the front cover of Icha Icha when he caught Oji-san reading it several times. Jiraiya had finished talking by the time they reached their room, and Naruto being Naruto used his way with words to form a comprehensible and well-thought-out sentence after listening. What the hell are you talking about Uro-sensei? What in the hell is a pussy? Is that like a cat? Cause I seriously hate cats. Naruto shivered as he remembered his horrendous times with Tora. Jiraiya looked at Naruto as if he had sprouted wings and grown several tails, are you telling me you've never heard that word? Shouldn't you know this stuff? Kami I thought they would have taught at least a little sexual education in the academy. Naruto blinked, I think they did mention something about it once. He frowned as he tried to remember if they had a class on that. And you didn't listen? Jiraiya asked sounding for all the world frustrated. The kid had been getting a lot better at being a ninja, he acted smarter too, Jiraiya was sure the boy was not as dumb as he acted, or used to act to a certain extent. But about other things he seemed he was still an idiot about. Naruto looked down at his feet, well I would have, but I didn't have Iruka as a teacher back then. They sent me out, telling me that because of my pranks the other day I didn't deserve to know about this. Jiraiya found himself frowning, he had learned a while ago that because many of the teachers had been biased against Naruto due to the fox, that they would often send him out during important lessons in class. It was part of the reason Naruto had next to no knowledge about being a shinobi. What about your Oroki no Jutsu? Jiraiya asked, how did you come up with that if you had no knowledge of sexual education? Oh that, Naruto said in a dismissive tone, I saw Oji-san reading that perverted book of yours and saw the cover, I got the idea from that but the girl in the front cover isn't naked, Jiraiya said. Naruto tilted his head to the side, neither is mine, what do you think that smoke covering is for? Jiraiya found himself feeling stupid as he heard that, he had assumed that the smoke covering had been used to tantalize the person Naruto used it on into wanting more. 
apparently from what Naruto was saying that was not the case, and the only reason the smoke was there was because Naruto did not know enough about female anatomy to actually create those parts. This meant that his apprentice knew next to nothing about sex, or the opposite sex. It was both fortunate and unfortunate that Naruto happened to be with a man who made his living off of books that were little better than porn. All right Naruto, Jiraiya said as he pulled out his first edition of Icha Icha Volume 1, I'm going to be teaching you all you need to know about women. As soon as Naruto saw the little orange book he knew he had to escape, he shot towards the window, hoping to make a quick exit. However Jiraiya was far faster than he was, before the blonde even knew what was happening he found himself being tied to a chair and trying not to stare or listen to his sensei as he talked about sex and used his perverted book as a reference. His screams and pleas could be heard all throughout the night. The next day found Naruto at the library, looking up knowledge on females and sex. He had been forced to listen to his damn sensei for more than half of the night, now he felt like he had been scarred for life. However the Toad Senen's talk had also made him curious, Jiraiya had told him a lot, but he also felt that the man had left a lot out, after all he had only focused on the perverted parts about sex. So here Naruto was, along with several clones, reading books on human anatomy, the reproductive system and intimate relationships in general, he had even gotten a few romance novels, hoping it would help him understand more about women and relationships with the opposite sex in general. After all there was no way he was going to let his sensei corrupt him with his perverted ways. XXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXX
Ninja Art, Kunai Shadow Clone Jutsu. One kunai became 41 kunai as they headed for the still airborne Jiraiya, noticing the kunai the toad sent and went through his own hand seals to counter. Ninpa, Hari Jizu. Ninja Art, Underworld Guardian Spikes. Jiraiya's hair wrapped around his body and became hard as steel as it deflected the kunai, when all the kunai were gone Jiraiya whipped his still long hair around and called out another jutsu. Ninpa, K Senbone. Ninja Art, Hair Senbone. Several hardened needles of hair were launched at Naruto who took out two kunai, spinning them by the rings he went into his taijutsu stance with both kunai held in a cross guard. Naruto's hand soon became a blur of motion as he deflected the hair senbone away, whatever he couldn't deflect was dodged as Naruto flipped and twirled in an amazing acrobatic display. When the senbone hailstorm died down Naruto looked around not seeing Jiraiya anywhere, he frowned before closing his eyes trying to sense out the man's chakra. Having felt Jiraiya's chakra signature for six months now Naruto could pick it up fairly easily, he finally found him however his eyes widened when he realized the man was right under him. His realization came too late as Jiraiya came out of the water and smashed a fist right into Naruto's chin, before Naruto could fly too far he felt hair wrap around his body and harden immobilizing him. Jiraiya grinned at his student who was currently hanging upside down, the boy had come quite far in just six months. His physical abilities and taijutsu were now extremely impressive, definitely high jonin level with all the work they had been doing to bring it up to snuff. His chakra control was also coming along nicely, being at around mid jonin level, which was good, especially considering the fact that it grew at a near constant rate. However it was Naruto's ninjutsu that took the biggest leap, particularly in the field of elemental manipulation. Jiraiya had decided that since the boy was doing so well they would get started on learning elemental nature manipulation something that Jiraiya had planned on having Kakashi teach the kid when they returned. Now he was glad that he didn't go through with that plan, since Naruto appeared to have three elements, Fuutan, Wind, Sutan, Water, and Raten, Lightning. It had been a shocking discovery and Jiraiya had to wonder if it was some kind of bloodline or if it just came from his parents. Minato had been a Fuutan user starting out, but had later learned to use Raten during the Third Great Ninja War. And Kushina had an affinity for Sutan Jutsu, so he supposed it was possible but it still didn't make much sense. He actually planned on having Naruto tested when they returned to Konoha in three years, if he did have a Keke Genkai of some kind it could cause problems. Jiraiya shook his head he would worry about that later, nice job Gaki, but you're still too early to beat me. Naruto gave Jiraiya a pout before it turned into a grin that instantly put the Senen on guard, oh really? Naruto asked right as Jiraiya's eyes widened. Shit. Jiraiya jumped out of the way just in time to dodge a large explosion as the now identified cage Bushin he was holding blew itself up. As Jiraiya landed he felt cold steel against his neck, he couldn't help but chuckle, you've been waiting to use that tactic haven't you? Naruto grinned as he put his kunai away, well. Yeah, you tend to immobilize me a lot with those hair techniques of yours so I figured it would be a good way to beat you. Jiraiya nodded as they had sparred quite often, by now it was obvious that Naruto would know Jiraiya's tactics. That was going to be an issue since others would not fight like he did, nor would they pull their punches. He would need to have Naruto gain some experience, maybe he could see if Tsunade would give them some missions to accomplish? You're getting better, Jiraiya complimented as he thought about how to give Naruto some real life experience. Anyways let's set up camp for the night, tomorrow we'll head into a town a little ways off. Alright Uro-sensei, Naruto said as he grabbed several scrolls from his kunai pouches. XXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXX
Naruto's shoulders slumped, so you're saying I should forget about him? Jiraiya patted the boy on the shoulder, I know it's hard, hell when I tried to bring Orochimaru back and failed I was just as hurt as you were. But being a shinobi and especially if you want to be Hokage means that you sometimes have to make hard decisions. Naruto nodded to himself it had been on his mind a lot recently, he had a feeling that this would be the case but had wanted a second opinion. He didn't like it, he had wanted to bring his best friend back, but if that was not possible it would be better to forget about him. I understand, Naruto said with some conviction, I was wondering, do you think we could extend the training trip? Jiraiya blinked in surprise as he answered, well. I don't see why not. Jiraiya smiled at the thought of all the things he could teach Naruto if they stayed longer, I had originally planned for a four-year trip anyway, this will allow me to teach you much more and with your cage bushin you could easily be cage level by the time we return to Konoha. Naruto grinned as he finished eating and threw the stick his food was on away, he felt as if a small weight had been lifted off of him. Before Naruto went to sleep he made a vow that he would train to become the greatest shinobi ever. XXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXX
Sake had become something he found he enjoyed drinking especially since he couldn't get drunk and just enjoy its taste, thanks to the QB. Hey there handsome, do you mind if I join you? Naruto looked up to see a woman standing in front of him. She was about 5 feet 6 inches and wearing a red and black kimono. She had a fairly nice hourglass figure with nice curves and firm round breasts, she had black hair and emerald green eyes as well as pale milky skin. All in all Naruto found the woman to be very beautiful. Naruto grinned at her pleased with the small compliment she had given him, he had of course been called handsome before by other women he had interacted with, but it was still good to hear. Naruto had changed a lot since leaving a year ago, at 13 years old he now stood at a height of 5 feet 7 inches having hit a rather spontaneous growth spurt about 6 months ago, about a month after he and Jiraiya left on this training trip. His body was also more defined, even with the civilian clothing he was currently wearing it was rather easy to see the strain denoting to his well-defined pectoral muscles, abdominal muscles and arms. His face had chiseled out as well, having lost most of his baby fat with his harsh training, giving it a masculine look, add on the whiskers and he had what many girls had described as roguish good looks mixed in with feral sex appeal. How could I possibly refuse such a beautiful woman's company? Naruto asked rhetorically with a charming smile. The woman smiled at him as he ordered a drink for her while she sat down, thank you it's hard to find good company these days, she said looking around at the various tables. Naruto looked around to and realized what she met, everywhere he looked men were eyeing her with lust. I see what you mean, he started before giving her a sly look. Though I do hope that you're not just using me as a shield, Naruto affect a mock hurt expression. The woman giggled slightly, of course not, she started before pausing in thought. Well not completely, you seem like decent company. I'm quite good at detecting gentlemen who would actually be able to hold a conversation without looking below my face. That seems like quite a talent to have, Naruto said as he favored her with his patented foxy grin. A beautiful woman such as yourself must be used to sensing perverts rather easily. Naruto and the young woman talked for about an hour, mostly he would ask her questions about herself while regaling her with the things he had seen on his travels being careful to leave out his status as a ninja. He learned her name was Aiko Mayaki and much to his surprise she lived in Yuki no Kuni, Snow Country, one of the countries he had saved which was now called Haru no Kuni, Spring Country. She was apparently here on business working as a trader for some of Haru's technology, which Naruto knew was more advanced than anything else in the elemental countries. Naruto would also throw in the occasional subtle compliment that made the young woman blush, he was quite pleased with himself for that accomplishment. Since his first encounter with that group of girls a little over six months ago, Naruto had made an effort to get better at speaking with women. He would never go to Jiraiya for advice of course, after that night where the Senen had tried to teach him, Naruto had been scarred for life. However he had read up on intimate and sexual relations, as well as books that out about girls in general and several romance novels, he never really liked them but felt they helped. As he continued meeting different women in the elemental nations, Naruto found himself actually enjoying spending time and flirting with various women, he could at least partially understand Uro-sensei's obsession with them, even if he felt the man took it too far with his peeping. Aiko herself was pleased that Naruto was actually listened to her, she found herself blushing many times as Naruto used his charm and gave her subtle compliments and not just about her figure. It was definitely a pleasant change to people either putting her down for doing what some considered a man's job or only trying to get in her pants. It also helped that she was downing more sake than usual since she felt so comfortable in his presence. When it was time to go Naruto noticed that she was having a little trouble standing up, she had obviously drunken too much. Deciding to do the gentlemanly thing he offered her support as he took her back to her hotel. Of course nothing ever goes right when you're with a young beautiful woman at night and the two soon found themselves surrounded by several thugs. Look what we have here boys, one of the thugs exclaimed. That's quite the woman you have there boy, too much woman for a scrawny thing like you, another commented. Just hand over the woman and all your valuables and we may let you leave, the one on his right stated as he pulled out a knife. Aiko while drunk was sober enough to realize the danger she was in and pressed herself against Naruto. Naruto just sighed, what was it with all thugs being arrogant fools? Deciding to be quick he created a shadow clone to keep Aiko standing while he launched himself at the thugs. He appeared right in front of the first thug and hit him square in the solar plexus with enough force to send him flying down the road, breaking a few ribs in the process. The other thugs looked in surprise before it turned to anger and they charged him. The one with the knife tried to stab him but Naruto deftly moved out the way and grabbed the man's arm hitting it right where the elbow joint was, breaking it. Ignoring the man's scream of pain he spun 180 degrees and launched snap kick at the other man's left kneecap, breaking that before hitting the man in the neck knocking him unconscious. 
When that was done he moved over to the young woman who was looking at him with something akin to awe, respect and lust? Are you all right? Naruto asked as he walked up to the woman. Of course I am, thanks to you, she purred out as she grabbed his arm and pressed it into the valley of her breast. Naruto tried hard to ignore that as he walked to the hotel she gave him directions to and walked her to her room. Thank you for escorting me Naruto-kun, Aiko said. Naruto grinned as he scratched the back of his head, he he it was nothing really I was just doing the right thing. Aiko gave him a coy and seductive smile as she leaned into him, wrapping her arms around his neck and pulling him close. Mmm, I think such behavior deserves a reward, she said. Naruto shivered as her breath hit his lips and found himself getting rather stiff in his lower region. What kind of re- his question was cut of Aiko pressed her lips against his, for several second Naruto found himself frozen stiff, while he had kissed women before it was always him to initiate it. Thankfully instincts began to take over as he started kissing back, as Aiko moaned into the kiss Naruto licked her lips asking permission to enter. When she opened her mouth to grant him entrance and he tentatively probed her mouth. Wrapping his arms around Aiko he became more emboldened as she moaned into his kiss. Naruto soon found himself in Aiko's room pressing the beautiful young woman against the wall as their kissing became more impassioned. Aiko moaned as Naruto brought his mouth away from hers and began to lick, nip and bite her neck. The young woman began to pant as she grabbed fistfuls of his hair and started to grind herself against Naruto's increasing bulge. It wasn't long after that, that they found themselves on her bed, where both of them eventually lost their clothes. Not that either cared at this point as passion and lust had taken an inexplicable hold over the pair. Naruto had one last thought before he completely succumbed to his growing lust. Thank Kami I learned an anti-pregnancy jutsu from that medical book. XXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXX
When the war of the beasts brings about the world's end. The goddess descends from the sky. Wings of light and dark spread afar. She guides us to bliss, her gift everlasting. XXXXXXXXXXXXXXX. Two months later. I can't believe, Jiraiya mumbled as he cried anime tears. Believe it Uro sensei, you lost, Naruto stated with a shit-eating grin. But, but. Ah, ah, ah no buts, Naruto wagged his finger at the depressed toad sage. Naruto's book had just been published a little over a week ago, Naruto had titled it Loveless and brought it to Jiraiya's publisher. After looking at what Naruto had written the publisher had decided to put the book on the market, the results had shocked both Jiraiya and Naruto. Within the first few days the book had swept across the elemental nations by storm, beating out all three Icha Icha books in sales and was still getting more popular. Jiraiya looked at the sales his student's book got and couldn't help but feel depressed. Naruto's book had earned a higher sales rate than his own books, not only that, but there was not one mention of smutty goodness in it. It was inconceivable. Impossible. And yet here it was right in front of him. Come on you pervy old man a deal's a deal. Jiraiya looked at him before he grumbled about never betting against blonde gakis who are too talented for their own good again as he handed him a scroll. Naruto looked at the scroll before looking back at Jiraiya with an eyebrow raised in question. It's from your father, in case something ever happened to him I was told to give this to you when I felt you were ready, Jiraiya explained. That was all Naruto needed as he opened the scroll and began to read its contents, after the first few sentences Naruto's emotions started to slip. His lips quivered and tears ran down his eyes as what he had suspected for a while now was confirmed, he didn't know whether to be happy, sad, angry or elated. Jiraiya watched his student's face flash through various emotions and became worried when the blonde's face became blank, it was the look Naruto would get when they were sparring and showed none of what he was feeling. Ah! Uh, Naruto? Jiraiya asked in an unsure voice, he was not used to these kinds of things. Despite having been through two great wars Jiraiya had always had a problem at helping others with their emotional problems, he himself always preferred to get smashed and find a woman to have sex with, suffice to say he didn't think that would work for Naruto. I. A small crack appeared in Naruto's facade, I'm going to the hotel, I need to be alone for a while. Naruto left rather quickly. Jiraiya looked up at the sky and sighed, he was not sure if this was the best idea but only time would tell. XXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXX
his arms crossed and a rare serious expression on his face. What? Naruto asked as if he had not heard what the man had said. He made that for you the moment he found out Kushina was pregnant, Jiraiya continued sitting down on the edge of the bed. I don't think I've ever seen him or Kushina as happy as they had been when they heard she was going to have a baby. So I should just forgive and forget? Naruto asked in a low voice, just move on like that because he was happy I was being born. I've lived in loneliness and pain for 12 years of my life because my own father sealed a giant nine-tailed demon fox in my gut. Maybe you can forgive something like that so easily but I can't godfather. Jiraiya winced at the way Naruto said the man's title, Jiraiya knew he had not been much of a godfather to the blonde, he could have disobeyed his sensei and the council. Taking Naruto with him and nurturing the boy into the man he should have been, but he had not done that. Naruto, I wanted to tea. And where were you? Naruto accused having cut off Jiraiya's speech, you were supposed to take care of me should anything happen to my parents. Where were you when the orphanage kicked me out and I was forced to live on the streets for a year? Where were you when I received my first beating by the villagers on my own birthday? Naruto look I. What were you doing huh? Peeking on woman so you could write those perverted book of yours and not accept the responsibility for your godson. Look here, Jiraiya yelled as he stood up and narrowed his eyes at Naruto, I wanted to take you with me. In fact I begged Sarutobi sensei to let me take you away from the village. I pleaded with him, but he wouldn't budge. He said he wanted you to gain bonds with the people of the village, I told him that it would never happen but he wouldn't listen. Jiraiya took a deep breath and calmed down, sitting back down he placed a hand on the young boy's shoulder. If it had been my choice I would have taken you with me, but it wasn't. And it's not like I didn't come to see how you were doing. What do you mean? Naruto asked having calmed down a bit, though tears were still falling freely down his face. Who do you think gave you that wallet? Jiraiya asked gesturing towards the seal on Naruto's leg that held Gama-chan. Naruto blinked, you gave it to me? But I thought that. That it was Sarutobi-sensei, Jiraiya shook his head, had it been him he would have given it in person. Why didn't you give it to me in person? The council, Jiraiya sighed, by the time I came back to visit you and saw how shitty your life was I begged sensei to again let me take you out of the village. However the council had taken much of the Hokaye's power after Minato's death, by that time sensei was unable to do anything. I was ordered not to make contact with you unless it had something to do with the seal. Naruto rubbed his eyes with his arms getting the tears out before he looked at Jiraiya with a smile, I guess I'll have to fix that when I become Hokage, ni? Jiraiya chuckled as he ruffled Naruto's hair, I guess so, but you won't become Hokage by moping about like this. Naruto chuckled as he dried the last of his tears, he honestly felt better after crying a bit. But crying never got people anywhere, plus crying over spilt milk wasn't his style. He was just about to comment when he remembered something, what about my mother? From what I understand she wrote a letter for you as well, but it's at their house in Konoha, Jiraiya answered. Naruto nodded, then I won't worry about that for now, I'll be able to read it when I get home. Jiraiya nodded and smiled, good now if you're done moping we have some training to do. Naruto grinned, right. xxxxxxxxxxxxxxx. Three months later. Naruto looked out at all the clones he had created after finishing his physical training regime, he had gone from 200 to 300 and had them working on various things. Most of which were elemental manipulation, more specifically trying to find a way to combine them. He had just mastered his lightning element just a month ago with it being the last natural affinity he had, so he had gone on to try something harder. Currently he had 100 clones working on sub-elemental creation. Contrary to popular belief sub-elements were not the result of a bloodline, while there were of course elemental bloodlines they usually centered around specific techniques such as Haku's High Jutsu Makyu Haozu, Demonic Ice Mirrors. There were also bloodlines that had specific powers that were used through sub-elements, such as Hashirama Senju's ability to tame the Baijuu. Otherwise the shinobi he ran into in Yuki would never have had the Hayotan Jutsu, ice techniques, that they had been known for before it became Haru no Kuni Spring Country, after Team 7 saved it. Even though they only manipulated pre-existing ice it still took the ability to combine water and wind elements to form the shapes they wanted. Anyone with enough control over their two elements and sufficient chakra control could create sub-elements, of course some were harder than others. Naruto had even heard rumors that there was a person who could use Yotan, Lava Release, which was a combination of fire on earth elements. And Futon, Boil Release, which was combining two contradictory elements, fire and water to create an acidic base that could melt a person's opponents. 
He was unsure how the Keke Genkai worked for that person but he assumed it allowed for a subconscious act of coating the walls of the throat with a layer of protective chakra. So far Naruto had only been able to create Hyotan, but he was hoping to see if he could combine more than just WND and water. Another 100 were working on a mix of Tai and Kenjutsu katas, after Naruto had decided it would be good to learn how to use a weapon other than Kunai and Shuriken. Despite not having any style to go off of right now Jiraiya had told him he was pretty good with a sword. It was Naruto's hope that he would be able to create his own style, like his Taijutsu style which he had learned was his father's style the Kenjutsu relied on high-speed combat. Though rather than aim for joints, nerves and delivering bone-crushing blows this style was designed to kill, going for the eight vital points in the human body. Its movement was also based off of his affinity with wind and water, the style was meant to flow so to speak. The user would move like the water, flowing in and out of attacks like water flows around a rock. However it was also fast and unpredictable like the wind, it could be calm and centered one moment then have all the power and fury of a raging hurricane the next. Right now the sword he was using was one he had custom made when he and Jiraiya had gone to Tetsu no Kuni, Iron Country, a country which had been considered autonomous for many years and was well known for their powerful samurai force. The blade was a total of 2-6 in length making it a Kadachi class weapon, with a pitch black finish while the edge was a vibrant silver color. The guard was that of the Uzumaki swirl made to look like it was made of nine fox tails in a dark orange color. The handle was also wrapped up in a dark orange cloth, with a gold pommel at the end and three tassels on the bottom. The sword was made out of a powerful chakra conducting metal that was found only in Tetsu no Kuni, it was the same metal that allowed that nation's samurai to launch chakra-based attacks from the blade, it was also very expensive to have made. Along the edge of the blade were several powerful and hidden seal arrays of Naruto's own design, their purpose was to store elemental chakra so he could launch elemental attacks rather than the standard chakra attacks to give him an edge in battle. He also gave the sword what he called a chakra circulatory seal, what this did was give the sword its very own chakra system complete with artificial tenketsu points that were bonded to Naruto's own chakra coils. This allowed Naruto to utilize more power if the seals ran out of chakra in battle, it was based off of the few things he had heard about on the same Ata, a semi-sentient blade that could absorb foreign chakra. Though Naruto's was not semi-sentient it was connected to Naruto in a way that most swordsmen would never be with their swords, he had given it the name Susano, God of Storms. The last 100 clones were doing a variety of different things, most of which were reading. Naruto had found an immense desire to learn after wanting to change himself. He would read anything from tactics and shinobi history to politics and gardening, not limiting himself to just shinobi-related subjects. However other clones were doing things like playing shogi to help work on strategy, jotting down notes on ideas for a new jutsu or seal, or even trying to create a new seal. Though those ones had to be replenished often as they usually had rather explosive results. Naruto turned his attention back to the notes in his hand, it was the one thing he had continued to have troubles with and the one thing he refused to use Cage Bushin to help recreate at all. Of course it was also a very linear technique so creating a bunch of clones would be next to useless for this jutsu. It was the one thing that he was striving to recreate, the prized jutsu that had made his father feared throughout the elemental nations and earned him his title. The Flying Thunder God or Hiraishin Unfortunately for Naruto his father had left very few notes on just what exactly the Hiraishin was, the notes were vague adhering to describing what the jutsu did but not tell him much on how it was created. What he did know was that through the means of a shiki, formula, and the use of his father's infamous tri-pronged kunai, Minato was able to utilize a space-time ninjutsu that allowed instantaneous teleportation. Naruto assumed the principle behind the technique was similar to the Kushios no jutsu, summoning jutsu, in that it revolved around space-time manipulation. So far Naruto had only made a minuscule amount of progress in the jutsu, since he had nothing to go off of except a description on what it did and the kunai with the shiki, though he was using a summoning array to start as a basis. Hey Naruto it's time to pack up. Naruto looked up to see Jiraiya waving at him, standing up he made his way over to his sensei. We're leaving? Naruto asked as he created a cage bushin and dispelled it, letting his other clones know to dispel themselves in groups of 10 every 5 minutes. Yep, Jiraiya said with a smirk, it's been about a year and I think the only thing you're really missing is experience. Naruto blinked, so we're going somewhere I can gain experience? Jiraiya looked at him and grinned, not us, you. Jiraiya had sent a message a while ago about giving Naruto a long-term mission to help him gain experience and he had just received a reply. Kiri, missed, was apparently still locked in a civil war with Keke Genkai on one side and the Mizukage on the other. Mei Terumi the apparent leader of the bloodline side had petitioned Konoha for help, 
hoping that their love of bloodlines would give her some support. Normally Konoha had a policy of non-aggression and keeping out of international affairs that did not involve them, however with Jiraiya's recommendation that Naruto needed to experience some things Tsunade had hesitantly given this mission. Me? Naruto asked in confusion, he was unsure what Jiraiya meant by that. Where will you be? I have some business to take care, Tsunade assigned me a covert operation to gather info on the different hidden villages to see which ones are a threat to Konoha and find out more on Akatsuki. It will be easier for me to sneak around without you, no offense but while you're a damn good fighter you can't speak for shit. Hey! Naruto pouted puffing up his cheeks comically, I was able to paint the Hokage monument in broad daylight and not get caught until I was done. I think that shows how skilled I am. Jiraiya chuckled, true but this is not Konoha I'll be going to, many of these places are most likely not friendly and a few may kill you for who you look like. Naruto was silent as he thought about that, it was true that he was starting to look more like his father. Each day that passed he grew more and more like the man, no doubt if Iwa or some other country that harbored a grudge against his father were to see him they would send assassins out. Naruto was not stupid anymore, he knew that while he was strong, at least mid to high Jonin by now he was far from invincible. He could hold his own well enough against Jiraiya, but even when the man went all out he held back some so as not to kill Naruto. Others would have no such compunction and would no doubt not hesitate to kill him. It was also as the man said, he lacked the experience to make full use of his abilities and that could cost him. So where will I be heading? Naruto asked having decided this would be a good opportunity to see how well he could do against someone other than Jiraiya. The Toad Senen gave Naruto a mission scroll, you'll be heading to Kiri which is currently locked in a civil war. Naruto unrolled the scroll and began to read it while Jiraiya spoke, you will assist the bloodline side until the war is over. The rendezvous point is in the scroll as well as a code word and information about who you will be working with. Naruto nodded as he finished memorizing the information and handed the scroll to Jiraiya who burnt it with a Katen Jutsu. I'll contact you via summoning from time to time to see how you are doing and give you any info that I feel you can use. Make sure you stay safe, okay Gaki? Jiraiya finished. Naruto nodded, don't you worry Uro-sensei, I'll do my best. Chapter 2, Bloodline Wars Naruto readjusted the hood to his cloak as he got off the ship he had gotten passage on, bringing a hand up to his face he also made sure his face mask was in place to hide his whisker marks before looking around. The port town he was in had definitely seen better days, the ships that would normally be bustling in and out of the port were almost non-existent with there only being one or two ships in the dock. Most of the buildings were run down and had rust staining many different areas, making it obvious they either did not have the resources or the people to maintain appearances. The people were even worse off, as Naruto began to walk to the meeting point he saw more homeless people in this port than he did when Gato had been terrorizing Nami no Kuni, Wave Country. Many of them were sitting off to the sides of the street, begging for money or food while others were hidden in back alleys and side streets. What was worse was that Naruto could see whole families who were homeless, little children who were even more malnourished than he had been when trying to scrounge a living in the streets of Konoha. Just the sight of seeing how terrible these people had it and knowing there was nothing he could do to help alleviate their pain right now was heart-rending for the young man. Out of the corner of his eyes Naruto saw several figures hopping from the roofs, ninja with the Kirigakur, hidden mist, Hideo 8. He took a moment to watch as several patrols passed by, most likely looking for bloodline rebels and or dissidents. Naruto watched the ninja as they passed, trying to get a feel for their emotional position. Living in the streets Naruto had picked up the unique ability to detect what others were thinking and feeling to a certain extent, an ability that had saved him from a number of beatings by drunken villagers in the past by allowing him to avoid the more unsavory people who would wish him harm. Many of the faces on the ninjas here were an open book, the blonde was pleased to see that most of them seemed to feel just as bad as he did about the situation. While their faces showed no emotion their eyes showed too much, it had always been said that the eyes are the gateway to the soul, for people like Naruto that had never been more true. Their eyes showed guilt and sadness over what was happening here, small flickers of eye movement as they flicked their eyes over to some of the homeless people showed that they too wanted to help. Naruto knew they most likely couldn't because the Mizukage had more than likely threatened to kill their families. It was strange, Naruto had heard that during the beginning of his reign the Yondaime Mizukage was one of the most compassionate cages. Naruto did not know what would cause him to change so profoundly, however the evidence of the man becoming corrupted was right here for him to see. Naruto did notice a few ninja who seemed to derive some sort of pleasure from watching those around them suffer and assumed they were the more hardliners of the bloodline haters. Naruto stopped walking as his enhanced hearing picked up a stifled sob, 
looking around he noticed a few of the other ninjas seemed to notice as well and looked even more guilty. Channeling chakra into his ears Naruto was able to make out the sound better, let's see judging from the pitch of the voice it's a female around her mid to late teens. The sob sounded pained and Naruto could also hear fear in it, having never been one to stand by when someone was in that much pain Naruto put more chakra into his ears to locate the source of the sound. Walking into a small alley Naruto looked around, when he was sure no one was following him Naruto disappeared in a gentle breeze. Reappearing on the roof the blonde crouched down and activated one of the few genjutsu he could do. It was more of a genjutsu slash ninjutsu hybrid much like the standard henge that is taught in the academy, rather than affect the mind of an opponent it affects the surroundings of the area. Channeling chakra into the oxygen particles in the air, masking and camouflaging the area around Naruto to make it seem as if there is nothing there making him invisible to all but the most powerful of cage-level ninjas or those with dujutsu and enhanced senses like those of the Inuzuka clan. It was a technique Naruto had been taught by Uro Senen who used whenever he tried to peek on woman, though Naruto understood it had many applications in stealth and espionage as well. Making sure he would not be spotted by any of the ninja that were passing on the roofs Naruto continued on his way towards the sobs which were now becoming much louder and clearer. Naruto eventually found the source coming from an abandoned warehouse of some kind. There were no ninja that he could see in this area but he knew that did not mean anything. He looked towards the second story window which is where the voice was coming from, dropping off the building he was on Naruto quickly moved towards the warehouse. Channeling chakra to his feet the blonde shinobi walked up the walls to take a peek inside the window, what he saw was something that would haunt and disgust him for a long time to come. Inside was a young woman who couldn't be more than 16 or 17 years of age, she had long dark brown hair which seemed to be the standard hair color in Kiri and vibrant green eyes. Her skin was a pale milky smooth color and she had a figure that Naruto had seen on some of the civilian supermodels that Uro-sensei was with on occasion. At least the woman's eyes would have been vibrant if it were not for the fear in them and the tears that were flowing out of them freely, her skin which would probably have looked perfect and beautiful was instead black from multiple large bruises that covered most of it from her neck to her legs. Her face had several welts and bruises, no doubt from being hit and smacked multiple times. The obvious source of this woman's fear and pain was right in front of her, a man who looked to be in his mid-thirties. He had a medium height and medium build, with black hair and brown eyes. The man was obviously a Kiri Shinobi since the man was still wearing his Hideo 8 on his head, however everything else was gone. The man was completely nude and currently in the process of raping the young woman, judging from the bruising on her some of which looked several days old this was not the first time he had done so. Naruto's blood began to boil as he gnashed his teeth together hard enough that the coppery and tangy taste of blood came to the blonde as his gums began to bleed. Naruto had always held a deep-seated respect for women that sometimes bordered on worship, he was not sure what it was about them that made him feel this way but it was part of the reason he had never raised his hand to Sakura when she would hit him. Sure Naruto was not a virgin anymore and had in fact slept with several girls in the past year, but he would never do anything unless the woman he was with wanted to. To see some man. No a monster doing something like this to an innocent young woman was nearly enough to send him on a killing spree of every shinobi in this village. Closing his eyes Naruto quickly reined in the impulse and took several deep breaths, even if he tried to he would not be strong enough to defeat an entire town of ninja. He could not do anything about them right now, he looked into the window, while he may not be able to do anything about this town, but he could at least help this woman. Ha ha ha, come on you know you love it. Karai Mushashi laughed as he listened to woman sob and cry. A jonin of Kiri for nearly 10 years Karai was considered a sick bastard even by his peers, he had become a Janan at an early age and had risen through the ranks fairly quickly. It had at one point in time it had been the man's hopes to become a member of the Kiri no Shinobi Gatana Nananan Shu, seven swordsmen of the mist, before they had fallen from grace. When they had been disbanded due to the betrayals of nearly all the Shinobi in that group except one he had just opted to find some other way to gain glory. While he had yet to find glory, he had found several ways to entertain himself. He looked down at the young teenage girl he was pounding himself into, her pleas were like music to his ears. Ah! Did I ever tell you how it work? He was cut off from speaking as a pair of hands wrapped around his head, one covering his mouth and the other on the back. With a quick twist the hand snapped Karai's neck and let him fall out of the girl and drop to the floor, revealing Naruto who was glaring at the corpse as if hoping it would spontaneously combust. Taking his attention off the now dead shinobi Naruto looked over at the girl and winced, she looked like she was going into shock, no doubt from seeing someone die. Her eyes were wide and she was starting to hyperventilate it, he made to move over to the girl and help treat her wounds but stopped when she turned her attention to him and began backing away. P please. Don't hurt me, the girl's voice chalked as she continued to back away, 
despite the fact that she was already pressed against the head of the bed, I, please I. Don't. I don't. Naruto pulled down his hood and face mask to give the girl the most compassionate smile he could muster despite the sick feeling he had in the pit of his stomach, don't worry I'm not gonna hurt you. The girl looked at him and seemed to calm down a bit, I just wanna help you, Naruto continued as he made slow movements towards her. You. You do? She asked as a small flicker of hope appeared in her eyes for a brief moment before vanishing. How do I know I can trust you? She asked in a low voice. You don't, Naruto said keeping his tone warm and kind, I have no way of proving to you that I don't mean you any harm. All you can do is choose to trust or not trust that what I say is true, however I promise you right now that I will help you and take you somewhere safe where you won't ever have to deal with things like what that man did to you again. The girl looked at him for a second before slowly relaxing, she scooted herself away from the head of the bed and moved to the center of the mattress. Naruto made slow movements towards her to make sure she did not freak out before sitting at the edge of the bed next to her, I'm going to take out a scroll containing medical supplies to heal you, is that okay? Naruto asked. He received a cautious nod and slowly reached into his pouch which had several containment seals that were used to hold his various ninja tools. Pulling out a scroll Naruto unrolled it on the bed and unsealed the materials, a number of medicinal creams, disinfectant and medical bandages came out of the seal. Naruto had long since realized that he would never be able to use medical jutsu, not just because he was always constantly battling to keep his control at the level it was it due to the constant increase in his reserves. But also because his chakra had traces of the cubies in it, while the minuscule amounts did nothing to him since he has had the fox since birth, they were incredibly toxic to others. Still that did not mean that he would not do the best he could to make up for his deficiency in this area by becoming adept at the creation of healing ointments and herbology, Naruto picked up one of the tubes containing one of his own personal creations. To make up for his lack of being unable to use healing jutsu, Naruto had long since decided to make try and make a healing cream based off of his own abilities of regeneration. Naruto had always known that he healed quickly, wounds that would take weeks for others to heal were gone in hours and ones that took months to heal disappeared within a day. Naruto knew this was due to Kyuubi and the seal on his stomach, which channeled the fox's chakra into his body at a constant rate. A little over a month ago Naruto had been able to replicate that ability to an extent and make a powerful healing cream. Utilizing the art of Fuinjutsu, sealing art, Naruto had come up with a modified containment seal that was designed to be able to store Kyuubi's chakra. With the use of several powerful purification seals that were designed based off the ones on the Shiki Fu in Naruto was able to purify Kyuubi's chakra to the point that it was no longer poisonous to humans, of course because of the potency of the chakra it still had to be given in low doses. Lethal wounds like being impaled or broken bones could not be healed with the maximum amount that could be used on a person, which was about the amount of chakra used to make a standard Bushin Jutsu. But wounds like bruises and small scrapes and cuts were an easy fix for the ointment which had the chakra that was stored in the seal mixed into it. I need you lie down while I apply some healing cream to your bruises, can you do that? Naruto asked in a calming voice. The woman nodded and laid herself down on her back as Naruto uncorked the lid to his ointment, dabbing a little on his fingers he lightly rubbed them together so the chakra in the cream would activate. He began to gently rub the medical cream on the girl's stomach, which was the area with the most bruising. The young woman hissed in a bit of pain before the healing effects kicked in causing her to relax, in a few minutes the large black bruise that had been on her abdomen was gone. Naruto continued applying the cream to the various bruises before moving on to the cuts, using a disinfectant before using the cream. When it was done the blonde wrapped the larger cuts in bandages, making sure all the wrappings were secured and covered as he allowed himself to feel a small amount of pride. If he were honest with himself he had far more respect for healers like Tsunade Ba-chan, rather than warriors like himself. After all it was easy to take a life and far harder to save a life. Can you stand? Naruto asked as he held out his hand to the young girl, she hesitated for a moment before taking it and standing. The young woman let out a yelp of pain as she began to fall, Naruto wrapped an arm around her waist and gently lifted her up while being careful not to touch her bandaged areas. Naruto sighed, her legs were probably broken, would you like me to carry you? The woman looked at him and bit her lip, it was obvious she still had a distrust of him because of what that Kiri Shinobi did, not that Naruto could blame her. He waited patiently for her to answer, I you promise you won't do anything? Naruto smiled, I promise, the woman closed her eyes as she seemed to come to a decision. When she gave a nod of assent Naruto reached into his pouch, channeling chakra into one of the seals he pulled out a large cloak, wrapping it around her to cover her modesty. He gently lifted her up in a bridal carry, making sure her head was resting comfortably on his shoulder. 
Without hand seals Naruto created a cage Bushin with mental orders to destroy any and all evidence of the three of them ever being here, with a nod to its creator the clone went to work. The woman in his arms began to nod off as Naruto left through the window, feeling lulled by the comforting and warm aura that the blonde possessed. Before she fell asleep a stray thought crossed her mind, I don't even know your name. She looked up at Naruto to see what she now realized were some of the most beautiful blue eyes she had ever seen as he gave her a soft smile. The last thing she heard before falling asleep was, it's Naruto. xxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxx. Ao sighed for what felt like the hundredth time today as he waited for the person who was supposed to lend the maid to arrive, whoever it was was extremely late. In the ninja world this usually meant one of three things, they had gotten caught up in something. This could be caused by anything from simple forgetfulness to getting into a fight with other shinobi, with neither of those being very good. They hadn't even gotten here yet, given the trouble it took to get into Kiri their support had been given some leeway in this, Ao had been given a week to stake the place out, with today being the last day. Or the final thing that could have happened, this person had been killed on his way here, either before or after they got here. Crossing his arms Ao began to tap his fingers a dull rhythm against his arms, this was unbelievable that someone would take this long to get here and not even have the courtesy to send a message. Back in his day people were prompt about being on time to any important engagements like this. A nudge on his shoulder brought Ao out of his mental ramblings, looking towards one of the men in his squad who was with him for this assignment Ao saw him nudge his head. Looking over in the direction indicated he spotted a man wearing a black cloak that reached down the ground. The hood was up covering the man's face with the only thing Ao was able to see being a blue face mask covering the bottom half of the man's face. The odd thing about the man was that he was carrying something in his arms, judging from the shape and size it was most likely a person. Ao activated the Byakugan in his left eye, spotting the three whisker marks on each cheek as he used the Dujutsu's x-ray vision, Ao relaxed ever so slightly. While this man could be their contact which had been described by a message Terumi-sama had gotten a while ago, it could also be an imposter. As the cloaked man came closer Al stopped him, you look like you're pretty far from home son. The figure chuckled, I was told there are many opportunities in Mizu no Kuni and came to try my luck. The voice sounded younger than he expected but Al visibly relaxed as he heard the password, he would still need to be weary but at least now they could move on. You're later than I thought you would be, Al said watching as the man shifted his attention to the form he was carrying. Now that he was not paying as much attention to their support he took the time to notice that the figure the man was carrying was a person, a woman to be exact. Sorry, the man said, I was. Held up. Al sensed the underlying meaning to his words and couldn't help but wince, while most of the people on the Mizukage's side were forced to fight there were others who were not above committing such atrocious acts. Well. I suppose it's fine since you're here, Al began, still back in my day. XXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXX
Under that was a mesh shirt that covered a little more of her arms and chest, but still left a good amount of cleavage showing. She also wore shorts in the same color as her dress and mesh leggings that went to her knees under that, she was wearing high heels with shin guards instead of sandals. Terumi-sama, Al voice interrupted Naruto's thoughts, this is the support that Konoha was able to send us. The man sounded somewhat disgruntled at only receiving one person for help, but May didn't seem to be bothered as she smiled at Naruto. She slowly stood from her desk and walked towards Naruto as she held out her hand, I would like to thank you for coming to our aid. In all honesty I had not expected to receive much help if any at all mister. She trailed off obviously fishing for a name. Naruto, the blonde said with a smile towards the busty red-headed woman as he shook her hand, it's a pleasure to meet you Mei-san. Naruto paused when he noticed Mei looking up and down his form and couldn't help but grin, I take it you approve of what you see? Naruto felt Ao as well as the two Anbu who were in the room stiffen and glare at him, but Mei seemed to ignore it as she favored him with another smile. I'll tell you. If you let me know what you think of me, that seemed to throw the others in the room through a loop. Naruto chuckled, let's put it this way, if ever there was a goddess walking this earth I have no doubt that I've just found her. Mei to her credit only took a light tint of pink to her cheeks as she gave him a favoring grin, then you can assume I. Approve of what I see, she took one last eye full of him before putting on her business face. As much as I would love to continue this banter with you, I need to tell you what our situation is and see if I can't give you your first mission. Naruto nodded as his face instantly became blank, I am at your disposal Mei-san. XXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXX
XXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXX
A flash of steel later and Naruto was gently setting down two dead ninja after he had pierced them through the temple, he rolled them over and memorized their features before creating two cage Bushin who henged into the ninja he had killed. Looking at the other two towers next to him he noticed they were still looking out at the grounds meaning he hadn't been seen, he sighed in relief before moving over to the second guard tower and repeating the process. With that over Naruto climbed over the wall and walked down onto the ground, sneaking over to the gate Naruto spotted the two who were standing guard on each side. Using the two kunai he had been working with to make his kills Naruto took aim and threw them, both kunai pierced the back of the two ninjas heads. Before they could hit the ground Naruto created a cage bushin, both the Narutos appeared next to the dead shinobi and caught them while they were falling. Hiding them off to the side Naruto looked at the wench designed to close and open the gate, pushing it up the wheels began to turn as the gate opened. XXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXX
they felt that if you could do that then killing some random person would be nothing. Naruto nodded, yes, I had looked into her eyes and watched her die, saw the helpless and pained expression on her face, I. Naruto quickly wiped away a stray tear hoping they wouldn't notice, she had but decided to just file it away for later. But that's not even the worst of it, I killed a doctor, someone whose purpose in life was to heal others. While they do have some minor combat training, they never take a life unless they have to. People like us, he gestured to himself and May, were killers. Our whole purpose revolves around causing more death than our enemy, Naruto paused. I've never really liked killing, in truth when I first thought about what I wanted to be my first choice was a doctor. Why didn't you become one? May asked in curiosity, a doctor was on the complete opposite end of the career spectrum. Honestly, Naruto sighed, I have no idea why or even when I had changed my mind. Wouldn't have mattered anyway, from the moment I was born I was chosen to be a ninja by factors outside of my life. Both of my parents were ninja, extremely powerful in their own right, that was part of the truth. But the biggest reason was because of QB, even if he had been given a choice there was no other profession he could have chosen because of that rather small detail. So, you became a ninja because of your parents? May asked. Partially. Naruto looked at her, I actually didn't even know who my parents were until a few months ago. But the Sandaime knew them, he would always tell me great stories about how my parents were such noble people who fought to protect their home. Of course I had no clue he was talking about them at the time. Sounds like he manipulated you, May scowled, she had never liked people who would manipulate an innocent child. It sounded like something Yagura would do so he could get a powerful pawn under his sway. Yes, I'm pretty sure that whether he knew it or not he was indeed manipulating me to become a shinobi. Though I would never blame him for that, he was the Hokage after all so I assume he was mainly telling me of his own feelings. Naruto took another swig of sake, I'm not well liked in my village so this was really the only option I had available anyway. Naruto blinked in surprise, why did he just tell her that? This was only the second time he had even talked with her, it's not like they were close or anything. He couldn't blame it on the sake since he was unable to get inebriated, perhaps it was the aura she gave off? Maybe her comforting presence? Or perhaps it was some other factor he had yet to deduce? He looked over at Mei who seemed to be interested in that comment, deciding there was no harm in letting her know a little more he started again. Because of events that happened at my birth, events that I had no control over I have been hated all my life. Mei frowned at that, were your parents traitors? That was the only thing she could think of that would make the people of his village hate him. Though she did not think that was the case, especially if the Sandaime had hailed them as much as Naruto said he had. Of course he could have told Naruto that so he could manipulate him into becoming a shinobi. Naruto shook his head, no in fact my parents or at least one of my parents is considered the greatest hero the Hidden Leaf Village has ever seen. Mei looked at the young man in thought, there were very few heroes within Konoha during the time Naruto could have been born, at least ones who were not too old or too young to be his parents. She looked at him closely, studying his profile as if she was trying to put together the pieces to a puzzle. Now that she thought about it he did remind her of someone she had seen in a textbook on the Third Great Ninja War. The man who had been hailed as the one to end that war with a single jutsu that had become so feared she doubted even Yagura would have fought him. An image came to her mind and a name clicked, she felt her eyes widened as she finally realized who his parents were, or rather who his father was. I see you figured it out, Naruto said as he saw the recognition in her eyes, I would appreciate it if you didn't tell anyone of my parentage. At least not yet. I can do that, May said after a bit of thought, he was after all he was trusting her with what had to be a fairly large secret. She knew it would cause a lot of problems not just for him but for her as well if word about Naruto's heritage got out. No doubt Iwa would be more than willing to join in the bloodline wars if they thought they could kill the son of the Kirov Senko. Thanks, Naruto said with a small smile. May returned it as she looked at him, so why don't you continue your story? There's really nothing more to tell, Naruto said with a sigh, I killed someone who I feel didn't deserve to die. Sure she may have been the enemy, but people who can heal are some of the only people I really respect. It takes little effort to kill, however to heal takes a lot of work time, effort and sweat. I think I understand, Mei said and in truth she did. While Mei did not quite have Naruto's perspective she could understand his thoughts and feelings on this kind of subject. Still don't you feel better knowing that the people you care about are safe because you're fighting? Naruto chuckled, that's the only reason I'm still a shinobi, if I didn't have my precious people to protect there would be no way I would still be in this business. Mei smiled at the man who was quickly becoming something of an enigma to her, from just the little conversations she had had with him since he came here she found herself intrigued. 
His apparent desire to protect the he cared for just made her want to figure him out all the more, so you fight to protect your precious people then? Naruto nodded absently as he took a drink of sake, only to be disappointed when he realized it was all gone. Then I suppose since you're here does that make me precious to you? Naruto looked over at Mei in surprise before he saw her slightly pouty expression. Naruto grinned as he tapped a finger to his chin, well. He looked at her with a critical eye before leaning over and wrapping an arm around her waist. I suppose so. That is if you make me one of your precious people, he finished in a husky whisper. Mei shivered from his tone as a small blush spread across her delicate features, but she managed to keep her grin in place as she looked at him for a second before standing up. I guess I could make you one of my precious people, Mei said using Naruto's term as she winked at him. Provided you escort me to my room. Naruto laughed as he stood up and stuck his arm out for Mei to take, I can do that. Though some of your men might get jealous to see you cuddling up to the new guy. Well then I suppose they will stay jealous won't they? Mei asked rhetorically as they left the bar, I hope you're not intimidated by any of my admirers. Me intimidated, Naruto scoffed, don't make me laugh. I was just worried that they may end up in the hospital for trying to put me in my place. May giggled before they continued to walk down the hall, a companionable silence coming between the two. True to Naruto's prediction he did draw several angry glares from almost all of the men who were also in the hall, no doubt wondering how the new guy was so close to their leader when he had only been here for a few days. What Naruto had not expected was some of the women who actually glared at May. Naruto had not been here long enough to be really known and he had not met any of these women even in passing. He wondered if they simply thought she was degrading herself by getting so close to someone after only a few days of their first meeting. It's because they're jealous. Huh? Naruto asked in a somewhat dumb tone as he turned to look at Mei. Mei covered her mouth with her free hand as she giggled, word of how you rescued a woman from being raped apparently spread through the base soon after you arrived. It seems that your good dead made you quite popular. But, they don't even know me? Naruto said blinking before realizing what was going on. I can't believe. I didn't think I would see fangirls in the middle of a war. This comment caused Mei to laugh outright causing the people around the two to become startled. Mei's laugh calmed down and became an occasional small giggle, well to be honest I didn't expect it either, but there you have it, she said as she made a casual gesture to a few of the girls around her. I suppose so, Naruto said as they once again continued in silence, a few moments later they were at Mei's door. Mei turned around and gave him an alluring smile, Thank you for escorting me kind sir. Naruto grinned at her as he gave an exaggerated bow, not at all my lady, it has been a pleasure to merely find myself so graced as to be in the presence of a goddess such as you. Charmer, Mei murmured unable to contain a blush from the comment. I am so such thing, Naruto affected mock surprised look, I am merely someone who speaks what I think. Naruto took her hand and gave it a small kiss, looking up he was pleased to see Mei's face was now red. He gave her one last smile. I'll see you later Mei-chan. Mei's blush increased in hue at the addition of the affectionate suffix Naruto added to her name, Mei-chan. I could get used to being called that. She looked at where Naruto was going down the corridor, Naruto Namikaze you truly are an enigma I will enjoy figuring out. XXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXX
Naruto looked back at Mei who had an apprehensive look on her face, Naruto was not sure why this meeting had been called since they met every week on Wednesdays to hear reports and plan. All Naruto knew was that it was apparently important, most likely new intel that could spell trouble for the rebels. As you all know we have recently dealt several harsh blows to the Mizukage's forces, Mei started catching the attention of the people in the room. That was true enough, in the past five months they had managed to destroy ten enemy strongholds, cutting off valuable trade routes and isolating enemy forces allowing the bloodline side to pick them off. After that first mission Naruto had been on they had continued to use the infiltration tactic with great success, while Naruto would not claim credit for being the reason their missions were so successful he was glad to know that he was helping bring this violent war to a close. However, it seems that with our success Yagura has decided that we have become a serious threat. I have received intel that he has amassed his forces and they will be heading towards our base at one month's time to destroy us. The two who had no part in the fighting paled at her words and began to mumble to themselves, a glare from May quickly shut them up. Because of this I am planning an evacuation of the base, we are lucky that we were able to get this information fast enough so that we can evacuate the base without costing lives. So we're going to have to run eh? Asked Ao with a small grumble, back in my day when we had to face such engagements we. Ow. May interrupted with a sickly sweet voice as one of her perfectly shaped eyebrows twitched. Shut up. Or I'll kill you. Ao paled. I, I didn't mean to imply that. Naruto gave a silent laugh as he listened to the small banter, Naruto had realized a while ago that this was a common occurrence between the two. Mei tended to get a particularly bad attitude when Ao would start talking, mainly because he would somehow end up making a comment that could easily be taken as a talk about marriage. Mei had confided in Naruto privately that she was somewhat depressed that she was going to reach her thirties in a few years and had yet to find a husband. Naruto had merely laughed and told her that a woman as beautiful as her shouldn't worry about such things since she would no doubt have men flocking to her as soon as the war was over. This had led to a little word play between the two that had begun to happen more often these days, especially when it was just the two of them. Naruto had grown much closer to the busty red head, he would not deny that he was quite possibly starting to fall for her. She was smart, strong, intelligent, beautiful and seemed to have the same love of flirty wordplay that he had. While Naruto would deny it vehemently to anyone who commented on it, traveling with Jiraiya had slightly tainted him. While Naruto would never peep on a woman like Uro-sensei did, he always took great joy in making a woman blush either with a subtle or not so subtle compliment on her looks or making a comment laced with innuendo. Seeing a beautiful woman who seemed to enjoy the same thing he did was not only welcome since it kept things fun, but also because their talks kept Naruto from having nightmares about the things he had done and seen in this war. Mei-chan, Naruto said getting her attention as well as several glares from the others at calling Mei by such a in their eyes, disrespectful suffix. Yes Naruto-kun? Mei asked not caring to look at the shocked and jealous looks the two received, honestly she had figured these people would have been used to it by now. I don't think there is any need to evacuate, in fact this could be where we end the war. Naruto's statement caused several shocked looks all around, it was extremely bold to claim that they could end the war right now. Despite numerous recent victories and cutting down about one-third of Yagura's forces, they were still outnumbered three to one. That's a bold claim to make Naruto, Mei said dropping the suffix as she adopted a completely serious tone, I assume you have a plan? Naruto simply reached into his cloak's inner pocket and set down a large tri-pronged kunai on the table, while the people around him were wondering what the odd kunai was, Mei's eyes widened. You mean? Yes, Naruto said in a firm voice, it's time the world was reintroduced to the Flash. XXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXX
It would be selfish of me to not use one of my abilities just so my secret can remain secret. Mei gave Naruto a smile, despite the war he had been through Naruto still maintained a strong sense of right and wrong. She did not know when it happened but sometime along the line Naruto had made it his personal goal to end the bloodshed in Kiri. Perhaps it had always been there and that was why she had not seen it, maybe when he first came here and saw how bad it life was here that he decided to help. She couldn't be sure and if she were honest with herself she didn't care, just knowing that this young man who had quite literally turned the tide in the war was with her was enough. Thank you, she said in a voice so low that even Naruto's enhanced hearing almost caused him to miss it. Naruto tilted her head up to his, in the last few months Naruto had hit a growth spurt and was now at a height of 5 feet 9 inches about a head taller than Mei. You don't need to thank me, even if Konoha told me to return right now I would stay and help you finish this. Mei's small smile turned into a sultry grin as she closed the distance between them. Hmm. Such heroic nature deserves a suitable reward, don't you think? She began to draw circles on his clothing which was missing the typical hooded cloak he usually wore while on missions allowing Mei to feel the rock-hard muscles the young man was packing. Naruto smirked opting to be more bold than usual as he put an arm around her waist and pulled her into a one-armed embrace, making the two of them meld together. If you insist, Naruto said turning his voice into a husky growl, I remember reading that Mizu had some nice hot springs, perhaps the two of us can see if that's still true. My aren't you bold Naruto-kun, May said holding a hand to her face to hide the blush that had spread to her cheeks. I can't believe this, we're going into battle and you are making sexual banter with each other, both Naruto and May turned to Ao with deadpan expression. Why back in my day when we were going to fight we would. Ow. The two said in eerie unison. There was an odd shadow covering their faces making it so that Ao could not see their eyes, shut up. Or we'll kill you. Ao instantly paled and despite considering himself brave took a step back. Having Terumi-sama threaten him was bad enough but adding Naruto as well. The old hunter ninja felt a shiver of fear run down his spine. Well. I uh. I just wanted to tell you that the ETA for the enemy is 30 minutes and uh. I'll just leave you two now. Thank you, you may go back to your post, May said, adopting her leader voice. Ao quickly bowed and walked away, hoping he could make it as far away from those two as possible and hopefully not see them until the end of this battle. May turned back to Naruto are you ready? Naruto nodded, yes. Mei nodded before looking at the ground for a second, nodding her head as if she were coming to an important decision Mei looked back at Naruto. Leaning on her toes she gave him a small kiss on the cheek, leaving a light blue imprint of her lipstick on him. Naruto eyes widened for a second as he brought up a hand to his cheek, this time he was the one who found himself becoming red, which only made the blue lip imprint Mei left stand out more. That was for luck, Mei told him with a heartfelt smile, and to make sure you come back. Naruto's face slowly turned back to its natural tan color as he grinned, do I get another if I make it back alive? Mei struck up a thinking pose, if you make it back alive I'll give you something even better. Perhaps that trip to the hot spring you wanted. Deciding to leave their conversation on a light note Mei gave him a wink and walked off. Naruto turned back to look at the preparations with a large grin on his face, despite knowing he was going to be forced to kill today that kiss had made his day. He channeled some chakra to his eyes to give himself some slightly enhanced vision in the hopes of clearing the thick mist, he sighed when he couldn't pierce through the mist meaning it would be a waiting game until they came within range of his vision. He took slow breaths as he remained calm, in all honesty had no clue if he could pull this off. This would be the first time he used the Horizon in battle, but he had spent several days getting used to the feel of using the space-time jutsu. So with some luck or perhaps Kami on their side he would hopefully be able to pull it off and defeat the enemies that were now coming for the bloodline rebels. It was about 10 minutes later that he saw the first troops tying to race across the field as quickly as possible, for a shinobi open war combat was the most dangerous kind. Unlike samurai who rely on their swords and charging the enemy's head first into battle, ninja used large-scale ninjutsu and other powerful techniques and weapons like explosive notes that were designed to take out a large amount of enemies at once. This meant that combat in any kind of open space was extremely dangerous. On the few occasions that moving in an open field couldn't be helped, it was always the best option to try to cross it as fast as possible. It would do little good here. Enemy forces are approaching, ready the kunai, Naruto yelled out his order. The people around Naruto instantly obeyed without question or hesitation, while he was not their leader and technically not even a member of their forces they felt inclined to listen to him. During the six months of constant war, Naruto had gained a charismatic presence that added to his ability to make people listen to and believe in him. Once the kunai were ready Naruto gave the signal. Fire! 
XXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXX
He had in all honesty never felt someone hit that hard. Of course he had only ever fought one other Jinchuriki before but all Gara had been able to do was turn into a giant Tanuki. Naruto flipped on his feet and began going through several hand signs. Raiden, John. Lightning release, false darkness. A large blast of lightning shot out of Naruto's mouth and tore through the landscape as it headed for Yagura, the attack hit dead on and Naruto waited for the dust to clear before making his next move. When it did Naruto cursed at not even seeing a scratch on the man, apparently when one had full control over their Baijuu as displayed here it came with some serious advantages. Yagura came at Naruto again, getting in front of him faster than most people could blink and aiming a punch with enough power that it would take off the blonde's head. Fortunately Naruto had trained extensively to fight at high speeds and dodge the blow, tilting his head to the side as he crouched down. A Rasengan appeared in both his hands before he shoved them into the Mizukage's stomach and chest, it seemed to have an effect as Naruto was able to put more chakra into it than when he used the Horishin. A scream tore itself through the cloaked Sanbi Jinchuriki's throat as his stomach and chest muscles were partly torn away before he was sent flying. The man managed to flip onto his feet and looked up at Naruto with a snarl. Naruto grimaced at seeing the man's muscles and flesh almost finished healing. He wondered if this was what it felt like for others when he just healed any injury he received. Oh I can just tell, this is going to be fun. The three tails that waved themselves behind Yagura suddenly came up to the front as the man opened his mouth, large amounts of concentrated chakra forming between the tails. Naruto was curious for a moment wondering what Yagura was doing, that amount of demonic chakra would kill anyone, even him. The Mizukage swallowed the condensed matter of chakra, becoming extremely heavy and causing the earth he was standing on to shatter. Sanbiko Amari. Three Tails Menacing Ball. Fuck. Naruto swore as a large blast of pure energy was launched at him, Naruto threw one of the Horishin kunai he had been sure to gather as he fought. Just as the attack was about to hit Naruto flashed out of the way, catching the kunai before he landed on the ground. Naruto looked to where he had been, the attack had been and saw that it had torn a 50-foot diameter trench through the spot and it looked like it continued on for miles. Naruto was glad that he had been on the opposite side of the rebels or they would have been annihilated. I'm beginning to hate that jutsu. Naruto turned to see Yagura glaring at him, not deigning to speak Naruto got into his fighting stance again. Yagura chuckled before coming at him full force, channeling Kyuubi's chakra into his fist Naruto began to meet the man blow for blow as the fight continued. Unfortunately Yagura could use more tails than Naruto who could only use one and the punches were beginning to hurt, however there was really not that much that Naruto could do. Jutsu were for the most part useless, the only thing that worked was the Rasengan and Naruto while not having used a lot of chakra would not be able to make many more, the strain of using the Horishin so much today without being well trained in it had taken a large toll on his body. Naruto ducked under a swipe sent his way, before being forced to twist himself out of the path of one of the man's tails. As Yagura sent another punch at the blonde, Naruto sidestepped the attack while grabbing the arm and pulling him into a knee. It didn't seem to do anything as the man just got back up and began attacking him even more furiously, Naruto dodged another punch, only to have his feet swept out from under him. The blonde managed to roll to the left just in time to dodge another blow from Yagura that shattered the earth, pushing himself onto his feet Naruto shot off towards his opponent, appearing in front of Yagura before sending another, larger Rasengan at the man. Udoma Rasengan. Big Ball Rasengan. There was a large explosion and Yagura was sent flying back, rolling to the ground a few times before coming to a stop. Naruto was hunched over panting as the man got up again, he noticed that the wounds while still healing were more extensive. Naruto cursed, he needed to use a stronger jutsu, if only he had some way to distract his Jinchuriki opponent he may be able to use that jutsu. Yotan, Lava Bullet. Several bullets of molting magma shot at Yagura, impacting and making him stumble forward as he screamed out in pain from the lava melting the skin off his back. Naruto looked over to see Mei Terumi running towards him with a worried yet determined expression, unfortunately the blonde also noticed Yagura's eyes catch onto Mei's form. Both Naruto and Yagura disappeared, Mei suddenly found herself being thrown to the side as Naruto pushed her away from Yagura. Ducking under a punch Naruto shoved another Rasengan at his opponent, wincing as his arms felt the strain of the attack as it drilled into his opponent's ribs. As Yagura was thrown away Naruto ran towards Mei, R. You alright? He asked as he offered her a hand. I think I should be the one asking that, Mei said as she accepted the help up, I hope you have a plan for beating him because I'm drawing a blank. Maybe, Naruto breathed, how long? Can you hold him off for? Ten minutes at the most, Mei said looking to where Yagura was getting back up. That should. 
Be more than enough. Time, Naruto said, be careful when you fight him. I will, Mei said as she charged towards Yagura and began doing hand seals. Futton, skilled mist. Boyle released skilled mist. As Mei began to launch Yotan and Futton jutsu at Yagura, making sure to keep her distance Naruto created a clone, holding out his hand Naruto formed a Rasengan. The clone began to channel wind chakra into the spinning maelstrom of destruction, I'm only going to have one shot at this, I need to make it count. The Rasengan began to turn pure white as four points appeared swirling around its outer edge, making the jutsu look like a four-point shuriken. A loud screeching sound began to fill the air as the jutsu became complete, he looked over at Mei who had several bruises but for the most part looked okay. Mei. Get out of the way. Mei jumped away from Yagura as Naruto channeled a concentrated dose of chakra to his feet, shooting off with such force that the landscape literally buckled and cracked when Naruto kicked off. Speeding towards Yagura Naruto thrust out his hand. Fuuten, Rasen Shuriken. Wind release, Spiral Ball Shuriken. Yagura had no time to react as the jutsu hit him head on, tearing through the Baijuu cloak like it was mere paper as he was lifted into the air. A large dome 80 feet in diameter appeared around him as millions upon millions of wind blades sliced into the Jinchuriki at the cellular level, had the dome not blocked out sound, Naruto and Mei were sure they would have heard screaming seeing as Yagura's mouth was open in a silent yell. Finally the dome vanished and Yagura's body fell to the ground, a second later there was a large burst of light as the chakra from the Baijuu escaped. At first Naruto was worried, he did not have the energy to fight any more and he doubted that Mei could stand up to a Baijuu. Luck seemed to be with them as the Baijuu did not have the energy to reform and dispersed, most likely heading to another location where it could regain its strength. Naruto closed his eyes as he fell to the ground, breathing heavily as sweat began to pour down his features. Now that the adrenaline was wearing off he could really feel the strain that using the Hiraishin had taken on his body, as well as an intense pain in his arm. He looked at his arm and grimaced, it had thousands of tiny cuts on it much like what Yagura had albeit on a smaller scale. They were already beginning to heal as Kyubi Chakra went to work, still the jutsu hurt like a bitch to use and he had hoped that he would not need it again until he found a way to throw it. He opened his eyes when he felt his head being lifted up and put on something soft, what he saw was Mei smiling at him as she began to stroke his hair. Are you alright? Naruto asked. Shouldn't I be asking that? She questioned as she looked him up and down. His clothes were completely ripped leaving him with his pants which were now shorts and his combat boots, you look like shit. Naruto chuckled, oh good then it's not just my imagination because I feel like shit. Is everyone safe? Yes, she said, many of the people were actually walking over to them after having witnessed the battle. Looks like you're a hero huh? Naruto tried to laugh only to wince as he felt his chest strain under the pressure, I suppose, well. I think I'm. Gonna. Have to. Take a, rain. Check on. That reward. Good. Night. With that the blonde shinobi closed his eyes as the last bit of adrenaline left his body and he fell asleep. Mei looked at him for a good while as she continued to absently run a hand through his hair, she looked over at the battle site and shook her head. The battlefield was a site of absolute destruction, the techniques used having literally reformed the landscape. She looked over at the large crater Naruto's jutsu created, she had never seen such a destructive technique, even her yotan attacks didn't do that much damage. Looking back at Naruto she smiled, Enigma indeed. XXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXX
Now that they were experiencing a new time of peace Naruto had made sure to get to know the busty cage under circumstances where they did not have to fear for their life. He had to say that it was fun taking Mei out to eat, out for a walk or when they watched a movie after the new cinema had been built. That had been an experience since they had watched the Princess Gale movie with Yuki Fujikaze aka Koyuki Kazaana, which many of the people including Mei had been shocked to see showing their hero when he was younger. All in all it was a good experience and allowed Mei to get out of the office every now and then, a place that seemed to be taking up more of her time than she would have liked. Unfortunately he now had to leave. A few days ago he received a message that Jiraiya was on his way here and it would in fact not surprise the young blonde if the man already was here. He looked over as he felt some added weight on the couch and saw Mei looking at him with a curious expression. He gave her a smile, it looks like this is goodbye for now. You're leaving? She asked with a frown, she had grown close to the young man and did not want him to go. During the war it had been her talks with him that brought her comfort and allowed her to forget all of the bloodshed, even if only for a little while. Jiraiya is probably already in town, Naruto ran a hand through his hair, now that my mission is complete I'm no doubt going to begin my training again. I don't really think you need any more training? Mei mused with a grin. I wish that were true, Naruto said with a sad smile, but once word gets out my enemies which are already quite numerous will multiply. I have to be ready so I can protect not only myself but the people they will no doubt use to get to me. Mei sighed, someone as young as him should not have so many enemies. She shook off the morbid thoughts. So when will I see you again? She asked. Naruto smirked at her causing the woman to become curious, reaching into his cloak the blonde pulled out a tri-pronged kunai that he handed to her. We can see each other whenever, Naruto started his smirk turning into a grin, just make sure that you limit it to once every two weeks if it's not an emergency. That way I'll make sure to come whenever you call. Mei smiled as she closed her hand on the kunai, thank you. Ma, Ma you don't have to thank me, he began with a grin before affecting a mock sad expression. I would miss you far too much if we didn't get to see each other, he sniffed as he wiped away a false tear. May's smile turned into a sultry grin, oh, perhaps I can interest you in staying so we would never be apart? You know we never tried out those hot springs together. Naruto chuckled, a part of me is definitely tempted to stay, but we both know I can't. Still, I have two more things I want to give you. Oh and what's the mile per hour? Mei was silenced as Naruto brought them into a passionate lip lock, Mei slowly closed her eyes as she wrapped her arms around Naruto's neck. Naruto in turn brought his around her waist, pulling her up so she was sitting on his lap. When Mei opened her mouth to moan Naruto instinctively brought his tongue into her mouth, increasing the volume and frequency of Mei's moaning. One of Mei's hands went into Naruto's hair as Naruto's hands began to rub up and down Mei's thighs. When they finally parted both were breathing heavily with flushed faces. W wow! was all Mei could think to say after the kiss. Wow indeed, Naruto said with a laugh before kissing her again. XXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXX
XXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXX
the Kyubi Jin Churiki and son of the Yondame. Danzo of course knew of the boy's heritage, it had been a simple matter to find the information by having one of his roots steal the blood test on the boy, which had merely helped confirm his suspicions. It made sense in a way, Minato had always been one of the more noble people he had known, even when at war. It would make sense that he would not use anyone other than his own son for the sealing, he was definitely a man that Donzo had respect for, even if he did not agree with his soft policies. The problem that Donzo now had was information that Naruto had been the one responsible for granting the Kiri bloodline clan's victory, while that in itself was not quite a problem the fact that the boy had apparently been able to recreate the Horishin was. Donzo had spent a long time plotting and planning for the day when the roots of Konoha could rule, this boy could be a great hindrance to his plans with the power he was gaining. Of course he could be a great asset as well. Donzo thought to himself as he tried to come up with a way to get the blonde under his thumb. If he could somehow get the boy under his control it would make Donzo's plans that much easier to accomplish. He would bide his time, the boy was to come back in two years and in that time Donzo would start to make his move. The one-eyed man looked over at his subordinate still in a kneeling position, I want the boy's progress monitored and I want to be sent weekly reports, get it done. Hi Donzo-sama. XXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXX
And this is Naruto. Naruto blinked as he turned his attention to the conversation that had apparently been taking place, he looked at the rakage with unflinching blue eyes as the man studied him. For just a moment the rakage could have sworn it was another spiky-haired blonde who was looking at him with those same eyes, there had only ever been one man who had the look Naruto had. The resemblance is uncanny as well, I wonder if. He shook the thoughts away. After a few moments a grinned, it's nice to meet you kid. The rakage stuck out his hand which Naruto took without hesitation, Naruto soon found out that the man had a very firm grip. Deciding he was not one to be outdone Naruto used his own strength which he had taken to enhancing along with his speed, he squeezed the rakage's hand hard enough to let the man know he also had a great deal of physical prowess even if it did not show. A pleasure to meet you as well rakage dono, Naruto said with a feral grin. Ha <laughs> ha, the rakage laughed as he felt the kid's grip, which was far stronger than he had expected it to be. I like you kid, you've got a firm grip. That shows you're strong. Naruto grinned, I've always been told I have more bronze than brains, besides who needs to think when you can just smash enemy shinobi right through a wall. Action and power are what shinobi respect the most. The rakage chuckled as he went behind his desk and pulled out a small box, you know what, you're exactly right. I like you and because of that I'm going to give you these. He held out a box of protein bars? Naruto blinked as he looked at the box of protein bars unsure of what to do, he looked up at the rakage to see the man looking expectantly and realized this was most likely the man's way of showing respect. Thank you rakage dono, Naruto replied as he took the box, these will help increase my physical performance and training greatly. Ha! Huh. It's no problem kid, the rakage said before turning to Jiraiya. I have a hotel for the two of you already prepared, he handed Jiraiya a letter with directions to the hotel. Jiraiya nodded in, thanks before turning to Naruto and handing him the directions, I have some business to discuss with Rakage Dono, I want you to go to the hotel. You can explore for a while if you want, but don't cause any trouble okay? Naruto sighed, who do you take me for Uro-sensei, if anyone's going to get in trouble it will be you when you decide to go peeping into the hot springs. Stupid Gaki, Jiraiya mumbled. Naruto looked over at the Rakage, I don't want to be too much trouble but I was wondering if there were any training grounds you would be willing to let me use? The rakage thought it over, yes I know of a few you could use. You can use the ones on the east side of the village, not many people go to those ones so they should be open. Naruto nodded his head and left. As soon as the blonde was gone the atmosphere shifted as the two left in the room took on a more serious expression, so what do you know about Akatsuki? Asked Jiraiya. XXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXX
The man, a young blonde was currently balancing on a kunai with one finger as he did several one-armed push-ups. Sticking to his body were several decently sized rocks that Blonde was no doubt using chakra to keep in place, balanced on his feet were two large four-foot boulders, one for each foot. He was currently blindfolded with Hideo 8 over his eyes, while several bushins of some kind were standing around him in a circle. The boy was only wearing a pair of pants as he worked, allowing Yugido to see a physic that while not large like A's or Kiribai's was extremely well defined. It was lithe, firm and reminded her of a panther or some kind of powerful predator no doubt his body designed for a combination of intense speed and strength. She could see the ripple of his muscles every time the young man would move, watching him caused an unusual heat to rise to her cheeks. He's quite an impressive specimen isn't he kitten? Nibi? The one and only kitten, was the answer she received through her mind. Back to the topic. That young Tom is quite an impressive and handsome young man, don't you think? Well. You should go talk to him, then once you two are acquainted take him to your room and. Nibi. Yugito said as a blush began to spread across her cheeks. Oh come on kitten, don't be such a sex Nazi. Nibi said, go out talk to the man and then ride him until you doctor. I can't believe you. Yugito commented incredulously, though there was a large blush staining her cheeks and a small amount of blood trickling down her nose before she wiped it away. All you think about is sex, why can't you ever just give it a rest? Because you need a man in your life kitten, you turn down men left and right. It's getting rather difficult to watch, besides just look at those muscles. Yugito immediately tuned the Nibi's perverted ranting out, though she could not keep the blush from her face. She looked back over to the young man who had switched arms, she couldn't deny that he was handsome, ridiculously so in fact. But she couldn't get herself involved with anyone, aside from the fact that she needed to work twice as hard as other ninja to get any respect she was also a Jinchuriki. The few men who had taken an interest in her were not into her because they liked her, but because they wanted her body and to claim they had sex with Kumo's famed Jinchuriki. Bragging rights was all she was. You know that's not true kitten, you just haven't found anyone yet. Yugito sighed but gave a mental nod not wanting to argue with her tenant at this point, instead she turned her attention back to the young man. He was still going at his workout routine, as she watched she saw the clones that were surrounding him take out several kunai and without warning started launching them at him. She was just about to yell out in warning when her fellow blonde took out his own kunai and began deflecting the attacks, even as he continued to do push-ups. The few he couldn't block like the ones behind him were dodged, using the boulders on his feet as a counterbalance to each other as he leaned his body from one side to the other as he dodged the kunai. In all her years Yugito had never seen anyone who had such a ridiculously dangerous training regime. She watched him for what seemed like hours but in truth was only about 30 minutes as the man continued training. When it was done the clones dispelled and the man kicked the boulders off him and the rocks on his body dropped. Yugito watched as the man flipped himself off of the kunai, landing on his feet as he took off his Hideo 8 from around his eyes. Yugito assuming that he was going to go home, and turned around to leave. Only for a hand landed on her shoulder and a voice to whisper in her ear. And just where do you think you're going, hmm? Yugito yelped as she spun around and saw the blonde looking at her with an amused expression her eyes widened in surprise at how fast he had gotten to her. It hadn't even been a second since she had turned, that kind of speed was something she had never seen in anyone before. Seeing as how she wasn't going to answer Naruto took a moment to look at the young woman, he had to hold in a whistle at how beautiful she was, she might even rival Mei. At a guess he would have to say the woman was in her mid to late twenties and carried an aura that all serious ninja posses. Her hair was blonde much like himself, however rather than his golden sun kissed blonde hers was a pale shade closer to that of the Yamanaka clan. It was tied in a long ponytail that reached her lower back, her Hideo 8 was wrapped around her head keeping her bangs from falling into her eyes and face. She was wearing a black short sleeve shirt with a purple piece of what looked like body armor that covered from her stomach to the middle of her breasts. She was wearing standard black shinobi pants, a violet bandana that crossed her hips and standard black shinobi sandals. Her body was the kind he was beginning to suspect were a standard when it came to strong kunoichi, it was very lithe and agile looking, with a grace that reminded him strangely enough of a cat. Yet it still held a generous amount of curves, her legs were strong and slender looking rather well defined muscles yet still retaining their femininity. Her hips were not wide but neither were they narrow and also had nice definition, attached to the back of her hips was a perfectly round and firm bottom. She had a slender and toned stomach that moved up into a set of perky and perfectly sized breasts that were around a mid-D cup. Naruto looked up at her face which was a mixture of slightly oval and heart-shaped, with two emerald green eyes which were very feline in the way they were slightly slanted. 
Naruto favored her with a sly grin, so what's a beautiful woman such as yourself doing spying on little old me? Ooh I think I'm going to like him kitten. Yugito felt her face heat up at that comment as she tried to think of something to say, I, I wasn't spying I was just. I was passing through and well. You see I. Naruto laughed as the woman literally tripped over herself to explain what she was doing here, Naruto already guessed the rakage had sent her to watch over him while Uro sensei spoke with a man. No doubt to make sure he not only stayed out of trouble but also to see his skills, something that most hidden villages usually do when a foreign shinobi is present. Yugito's blush instantly became a scowl, what's so funny? Naruto chuckled as he waved a hand in front of his face as if toward the woman off, sorry it's just that I've never seen a kunoichi get so flustered. Or at least not a serious kunoichi like you obviously are. Yugito blinked unsure whether she had just been given a compliment or an insult, are you insulting me? Not at all, Naruto replied, I was just teasing you a little, that's all. Though I would still like to know why you were spying on me. Yugito was instantly cowed, sorry, I was just passing through to the training field I usually use when I heard you practicing. I guess I just got caught up in watching you, Yugito's eyes widened as she realized how her words could be taken. I mean I was watching you train. No I mean watching your training regime. I mean. Naruto grinned at the hole she had just dug herself in, not being able to pass up such a glorious opportunity he walked up until he was right next to her. So you got caught up watching me hmm. I take it you like what you see then? Kitten this one is perfect. Take him now and ride him till you howl at the mo. God damn it Nibi shut up. Yugito blushed as she tried to speak but could not come up with anything. That blushing soon increased as Nibi began sending images of a nude Naruto and her in various sexual positions. She looked over at the blonde only to blush more as she realized not only how close he was but that his body looked even better up close, unable to stop herself Yugito's eyes wandered up and down the blonde man's well-toned physic. She stopped when she got to his face and noticed the knowing grin he was giving her, she looked away as another blush stained her cheeks. My you're a lot bolder than most, Naruto said with a foxy grin, we don't even know each other's names yet and you're already stripping me with your eyes. I, I wasn't. Yugito tried to deny it, yet the fact that her face was beat red took any credence she may have had away. Not knowing what else to do she let her anger get the better of her and with a small huff began walking away. Seeing her leave Naruto ran to catch up with her, placing a hand on her shoulder to get her to stop. Hey look I'm sorry, Naruto apologized, I didn't mean to tease you so much. Naruto blinked as he paused in thought, well I did but I didn't mean to make you mad. Yugito looked at him as she used the enhanced senses Nibi gave her to try and detect a lie, to her surprise she found none and that his apology was completely genuine. She decided to offer him a small smile, it's okay I guess, I supposed I deserved it for intruding on your training. Naruto rubbed the back of his head, not at all, I'm a foreign ninja so it's only natural you would be curious about how I train. That reminds me, Yugito said, what was that training regime you just did? I don't think I've ever seen someone do something so insane before. Naruto gave a sheepish grin as he rubbed the back of his neck, actually it's a training exercise I set up for myself. Yugito raised an eyebrow as he continued, it's designed to make me split my attention on numerous exercises. The rocks sticking to my body are a more difficult version of the leaf sticking exercise that the academy in Konoha has, balancing myself on a kunai increases the difficulty and chakra control as well. The boulders are used as weights and balancers to keep me in balance especially when my clones begin to toss kunai into the mix. I use push-ups to increase the physical difficulty of the exercise and the blindfold is to increase my senses other than sight, this also helps with my spatial awareness. Yugito listened to Naruto's explanation and found herself greatly impressed with what was obviously a well thought out workout. It was kind of like an all-in-one extreme training routine, it would allow someone to get the maximum effect out of their exercise while also being something one could do on the road if so desired. So anyways, Naruto said snapping Yugito out of her thoughts. I would like to make up for my teasing you. You really don't have to. Yugito started only to be interrupted by the young blonde. I know but I want to, Naruto said as he gave her a charming smile, so I would like to make it up to you ms. Erm. It's Yugito, she told him with a light blush spreading across her cheeks. Yugito huh? That's a beautiful name, Naruto said with a smile, causing the young woman to blush again. Are you doing anything tomorrow? Yugito tilted her head as she looked thoughtful before shaking her head, no I don't have anything particular that I'm doing tomorrow. Her job was to watch him so she would technically not be doing anything, why do you ask? 
Well I was wondering if you would allow me to take you out to dinner tomorrow, say around 7 o'clock? XXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXX
In the one day he had known her it was plain to Naruto that Yugito was not really the kind of person who would go out on dates and what not, in fact given how nervous she seemed chances were good that this was her first date ever. Given how attractive the blonde woman was he knew that at least some of the men here had probably asked her out, most likely to be turned down the moment the request for a date left their mouths. Then along comes this new guy, a foreigner no less and in less than a day gets a date with one of the most desirable women in Kumo. It was rather easy to see why they were jealous of him. Not that he cared. They arrived at the sushi bar and made their way inside, seating themselves at two seats at the bar. The way Yugito moved to the seat gave Naruto a hunch that it was reserved for her, much like his own seat at the Ichiraku ramen. The thought of the ramen stand and the two people who were like family to him brought a smile to his face. Oi, Kenshi-san can I have the usual please? Naruto watched as an old man came out of the back, wiping his hands off with a rag. The man had the same air about him that old man Tucci had, Naruto figured it must be a chef thing. Wow Yugito-chan, look at you all dressed up, Kenshi said with a smile as he looked between her and Naruto. I take it you're actually on a date ni? About time if you ask me. K Kenshi, Yugito said with a small whine as her face began to heat up. Kenshi just laughed, so one of the usual eh? And what can I get for your date? He asked turning to Naruto. Naruto smiled. I'll have the same thing she's having. Kenshi actually looks surprised before shrugging, you must have quite the appetite if you're gonna eat that, they'll be right up. With that said Kenshi went into the back room to get supplies to make the food. While the food was being prepared Naruto and Yugito engaged in some conversation, telling each other about their experience as ninja. For the most part they left out anything that could be considered delicate information such as some of the classified missions they had gone on. Yugito normally just told her fellow blonde shinobi about the different places she visited and her time as a Janan under Killer B's tutelage, making sure to leave out her Jinchuriki status as Naruto was a foreigner. As for Naruto himself he regaled her in tales of his accomplishments when his team had just started, telling her about his first sea turn day rank mission where they had taken on Zabuza Momoiki and his mission to protect Koyuki Kazana. Yugito had to admit she was impressed that a mere team of Janan had accomplished missions of that caliber, though he did have Kakashi Hatake as his sensei so it was not too much to think such feats were possible. A few minutes after the conversation began to die down the food arrived, Naruto was shocked to see that it was 10 servings of each dish of sushi they served here. Naruto had never seen so much sushi in his entire life, wow when you said I better have an appetite you really meant it. Kenshi laughed as he went into the back of the store again. Yugito looked at Naruto with a smirk as he stared at the incredible amounts of sushi. If you can't eat it all I'd be more than happy to take it off your hands. Naruto looked over at Yugito and saw the challenging look in her eyes, he gave her his patented foxy grin. Not a chance. This will all be gone long before you can even think of sinking your paws into it, Naruto stated in a confident tone. Yugito gave him a challenging grin, ooh wanna make a bet? xxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxx
Yugito hummed in thought as the two got up and left the restaurant, beginning to make their way to her apartment. I haven't decided yet, she said as she began to tap her chin. Naruto grinned as he closed the distance between them. I've been told I give a pretty good message, if you wanted I could do that. Naruto started as his grin became larger, who knows we may even be able to make it a full body message. Yugito stumbled as a large blush spread across her face, she looked over at Naruto and opened her mouth only to close it as she could not find anything to say. After opening and closing her mouth a few more times she just huffed and began walking again, making Naruto chuckle as he caught up. They stayed like that for a while, just walking in comfortable silence as the two went into their own thoughts. Yugito was replaying the date over in her head as they walked, the blonde woman could not help but smile as she thought of how fun it was to actually go out with someone and be seen as a woman for once rather than a kunoichi. Throughout the entire date Naruto had given her small subtle compliments, whether it was on her beauty or her skills didn't matter as each were enough to make her face heat up and her heart flutter. He was the first person to see her as a woman first and a kunoichi second, while she knew the rakage appreciated her she also realized that he still saw her as a kunoichi and weapon. Her few friends likewise saw her as the strong kunoichi she constantly made herself out to be, while that was in part her own fault for not really trying to be seen as anything other than a powerful ninja, it was still nice for someone to notice another side of her that did not deal with death. She was shaken from her thought when she felt something move into her hand and give it a gentle squeeze, looking down Yugito saw Naruto had grabbed her hand with his own. He laced their fingers together entwining their hands, she looked up at Naruto to see a smile on his face causing her to blush and she looked away. She was not sure what it was about this young man, but something about him brought her a sense of comfort she had never felt before, not even when she was with her adoptive sister Samui did she feel this comfortable. Maybe it had something to do with his eyes she mused to herself, she had to admit that Naruto had some of the most beautiful eyes she had ever seen. A deep and startling blue that seemed to pierce into her soul, she could probably get completely lost in those eyes for hours on end. Or perhaps it was his smile? Whenever he smiled at her she could feel her heart rate increase and blood rush to her face, it felt as if she had just run a 200-mile marathon. Yet at the same time that smile brought her a sense of security and made her feel safe and at peace, it was a perplexing conundrum that she just couldn't get a grasp on. Thinking deep thoughts Yugi-chan? Naruto asked. Yugito turned to face him with a small blush on her cheeks at his new nickname for her, just thinking about. Things, she finished lamely. Oh? Naruto quirked an eyebrow at her, what kind of things? Er. Well. She wasn't sure what to say, she had always been a somewhat reserved person. Even with B and her other friends, she would never admit to being embarrassed or unsure and she would certainly never admit to being so taken in with someone after only knowing them for two days. Naruto looked at her with a gleam in his eyes, I hope you're thinking about me and our amazing date. Yugito blushed and Naruto smiled as he continued, perhaps thinking about how you would like to go on another one? Yugito felt her face heat up more as she looked down at the ground, you would go on another date with me? Naruto smiled as the two stopped outside her apartment, turning her around to face him as he took both her hands in his. If you would let me, I would love to take you out again, Naruto moved her hands to his lips, gently kissing each one. Yugito could not help but feel like she was on fire when she felt Naruto's lips against her skin, all of the emotions and experiences she had with Naruto were so new to her. She was unsure of how to react to him, he was so different from any of the other men who had asked her out, which was part of the reason she had agreed to his request for a date. I, would like that, she said as she looked at him with a small smile and a tint of pink on her cheeks. She was so glad Nibi was keeping silent for the moment, though she had a feeling she would be paying for that later on. Naruto grinned, then how about tomorrow we go out for some breakfast? Okay, Yugito said in a low voice as she fidgeted with her keys. Maybe afterwards we could even have a spar, Naruto said as challenging gleam came to his eyes. Yugito looked up at him and grinned, I suppose we could, though I should warn you I'm not considered the second strongest ninja in Kumo for nothing. In truth she had wanted to test herself against him since she had seen his training, if he was even half as strong as she thought he was it would be a good match. I'm sure I'll be fine, I may even surprise you, Naruto said with a smile as he leaned in and gave her a small kiss on the cheek. As he walked off to his hotel Yugito stood at the entrance to her apartment for a good while as she held a hand to the cheek Naruto had kissed. After a while of standing there she smiled as a small blush came to her features before she went inside. Moving into her room, she removed her clothing and threw them in the dirty hamper before going to the bathroom. After brushing her teeth and washing her face of the small amount of makeup she had on Yugito moved to her bed, lying down on it with a content sigh. When she fell asleep it was with a content smile on her face. 
Deep within the recesses of the young woman's mind a giant two-tailed cat was grinning, she was happy for Yugito finding someone nice to be with. It was well known that the Nibi was much more in touch with the emotions and feelings of her tenant than other Baijuu were with their Jinchuriki, since unlike most she was not really into violence. Nibi had grown very protective of the young woman she was sealed inside of, so knowing that Yugito was happy was definitely a good thing for the giant cat. She was also happy that she now had some serious blackmail material on the young woman, while she could not use it she could still tease the girl mercilessly. At least she picked a good man, Nibi mused, and to think he holds the QB. I wonder what Yugito will think when she finds out, it should be amusing to see. With nothing left to watch Nibi settled down and went to sleep, tomorrow was going to be fun. For her at least. XXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXX
He turned to Yugito, it looks like I have to head over to see what Uro-sensei wants from me. Yugito giggled at Naruto's nickname for his sensei, that's fine I should probably report to the rakage anyway. I had fun sparring with you, we should do it again sometime. Of course, Naruto said with a smile, but only if you let me take you out to dinner again. Yugito blushed, that's fine, she said having enjoyed going out with him last time she certainly would not mind having him take her out again. I had fun going out with you last night so. Naruto gave her a grin, I'm glad if possible perhaps we could go out again tonight, say same time? Yugito nodded, tonight sounds good. Alright then, I guess I'll see you later, Naruto said as he began to walk tossing a small wave over his shoulder. So, are you regretting this assignment now kitten? Yugito flushed red, well I. You seem to be getting quite close to that young man, Nibi's voice leaked amusement, not that I could blame you. If I had the choice I would have been riding him hard the moment I. Nibi. Yugito yelled in her mind trying to get her perverted tenant to shut up, it didn't work and the rest of the weight of the rakage tower was spent trying not to blush or pass out from a nosebleed as Nibi began sending images of her and Naruto nude together. XXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXX
Killer B is here. Yo. B. The rakage said in a dangerous voice as his eyebrow twitched, what have I told you about breaking in without knocking first? Killer B shrugged, don't remember yo. I think it was something about making a mess in your nest. Before anything else could be said Yugito kicked Killer B in the back of the head, damn it B. How many times have I told you to stop with that stupid rapping? As Naruto watched the man known as Killer B shrug off Yugito's kick like it was nothing, he used the time the two spent arguing to analyze the man. B looked very similar in appearance to the rakage making Naruto assume that they were related, most likely brothers given their close age. On his right shoulder was a tattoo that said Tetsu, iron, and on his left cheek was a tattoo of a bull's horn, he had oval-shaped glasses and a white Hideo 8 on his head. He had a white one strap over one shoulder flak jacket, a red rope tied around his waist, white hand bands, and a white scarf around his neck. Naruto also noticed that he had seven swords on his back, making Naruto wonder what he did with them all. B, Yugito, a said as they got over the argument they were having, I am assigning you to a new mission. You are to help Naruto Uzumaki with his training. Yugito felt her eyes widen as surprise, this was not what she had expected to hear. Naruto from what she had seen was already fairly skilled, in fact she was almost positive that in terms of raw ability he had more talent than her. Um. Excuse me Reikage sama but why do we need to train Naruto-kun he already seems to be very strong. It was only after she saw the looks she was receiving that she realized what she had said, currently both A and B were looking at her with a mixture of surprise and amusement. Jiraiya was giving perverted giggles and he had taken out a notebook that he began writing in, occasionally muttering about blonde gakis being a gold mine. However it was Naruto reaction that was causing her to blush, in a burst of speed he appeared behind her with a large grin planted on his face and wrapped an arm around her waist as he pulled her back into his chest. So it's Naruto-kun now, eh? Naruto mused with a growing grin, I didn't realize you felt so close to me already Yugi-chan. As Yugito felt her embarrassment reach a peak as Nibi decided to add her own comment, Kitten I'm so proud of you. Remember to give me lots and lots of little ones with this young man. I didn't. What I meant was. Naruto made a mock hurt face, so you don't like me Yugi-chan? He made some sniffling noises and used the Inu Koinu Metsuki no Jutsu, puppy dog eyes Jutsu, on her. Yugito's eyes widened, no. Of course I do I just. She paused once again realizing what she was saying and felt herself becoming even more embarrassed. She literally felt her face burning which got worse when Killer B walked up and gave Naruto a grin. So you're Yugito's boyfriend eh? You must be something to get this kitty to play. Hearing B's rap Yugito became irate again, as soon as Naruto let her go she lunged at the large man. Naruto and the others watched with some amusement as Yugito proceeded to kick Killer B in the face, only for him to get back up a moment later as if nothing had ever happened. Now then if you two are done, the rakage said, I did not mean help teach Naruto san here techniques, I want you to help him with his baijuu. What? Yugito asked with wide eyes as she looked at Naruto, did the rakage pretty much just say that Naruto was a jinchuriki? She looked at the others around the room, none of them seemed surprised by that statement. Not even Killer B and she was sure he had not been told previously, he hadn't even met Naruto. You're a Jinchuriki? She asked as she looked at Naruto. You didn't know that Yugito? Question B, he's the nine, yo. Why didn't your Baiju let you in, that Nibi wouldn't tell you is such a sin? Nibi, why didn't you tell me Naruto-kun was a Jinchuriki? Ah. Well you see kitten. Nibi said in a nervous voice, I uh. Nibi. Wah. I'm sorry kitten it just slipped my mind honest. Um, are you alright Yugi-chan? Asked Naruto watching the various emotions play across her face. There were several ranging from surprise, confusion and anger, are you mad that I didn't tell you? Yugito snapped out of her thoughts when she heard what Naruto said, no of course I'm not mad at you. You're not a shinobi of this village so I can understand why you wouldn't tell me, we've only known each other for two days so it's not like I expected to know all of your secrets. Naruto smiled at her, pleased to know that she wasn't upset at him, thank you Yugi-chan. Yugito blushed, you're welcome. We will be talking about you not telling me something as important as this later. Yugito smiled when she heard a gulp in her mind, so if we're going to be teaching Naruto-kun to control his baijuu why am I here? Killer B is a much better person to teach than me, she admitted, while she could control her baijuu's power completely hers was only the two tails. Kirabai not only had the eight tails but was also called the perfect vessel for a reason. Because while we live with our Baijuu in harmony, the Kyubi prefers to harm many. 
Yugito sweat dropped, okay that was bad even for you Kiribai. Killer B looked somewhat depressed, I can't believe your descent on my rhymes Yugito, after all I've done for you yo. Naruto found himself sweat dropping as Yugito kicked him in the head again. XXXXXXXXXXX. Naruto opened his eyes to find himself back inside his mindscape, under Kiribai's instruction he was coming here to try and get the QB to cooperate. It had been a long time since he had last entered his mind, in fact he had not been here since he had learned the Kushios no Jutsu during the Chunin selection exams. He was pleasantly surprised to see the place looked a little better than the last time he was here, while it was still a sewer the walls that were once chipped and cracked were now more pristine. The water that had once been knee-deep on the floor was gone, the place looked much better, though it was still a sewer. Following the red pipe Naruto once again came upon the side of a large cage, in the middle of the cage was a single piece of paper with the kanji for seal. As Naruto walked up to the bars two large blood red eyes with black slits running down the middle opened up, it's been a long time since you've come here boy. The creature revealed itself as it walked up to the cage, it was a giant fox, with nine red tails swishing around behind it. QB, Naruto said as he stared at the fox with an impassive face. The fox gave him a massive grin filled with malice, what's this? No hello how are you? I must admit to feeling a little hurt. Cut the crap, Naruto said with a scowl, you know why I'm here. You wish to use my chakra, the fox said as it looked at him, however, I don't really feel like giving it to you. QB gave Naruto another grin, tell me little Ningen, why should I the greatest of the Baijuu give you my chakra? Naruto forced himself to remain calm, he knew QB's game and getting angry at the fox would only be playing into its hands. You know why you should lend me your chakra, we both know that if I die you die, Naruto gave the fox a small grin. Whether we like it or not we need each other to survive, right now there are 9 S-class criminals after your power. If they capture me they will suck you out and seal you into a statue for whatever their purpose is, is that something you want? QB gave a hum of thought, well I don't quite like the idea of being sealed into a statue. It looked at Naruto, and I must admit you have gotten stronger. What's this? Naruto asked with mock sarcasm, did I just hear respect in the great QB no Kitsune's voice? Don't patronize me human, QB roared at Naruto causing the blonde's hair to fly out of his face. I am the QB no Kitsune, the most powerful of the Baijuu, a mere mortal like you is nothing more than an ant to me. Naruto held up his hands in a pacifying gesture, easy there fuzzy I was just surprised that's all. QB glared at him for the fuzzy comment but seemed to let it slide for now, so how about it? You gonna work with me? Very well, QB grumbled, but do not think that this means I in any way like you. The only reason I am doing this is because I would rather not be sealed in a statue. The feelings mutual QB, Naruto said as he disappeared. QB stared at the spot where Naruto had been for a while before grumbling as it laid down deciding to get more shut eye. XXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXX
Naruto ducked under a claw swipe as he slid into Yugito's guard hitting her multiple times on the lower ribs and stomach before kicking her away. Yugito managed to flip herself through the air before skidding to a halt on the ground and falling to her knees. She winced as she tried to get up, that last attack had completely knocked the air from her and cracked several ribs, though she could feel Nibi healing her. She lifted her head as Naruto sat down next to her. You're getting better, Naruto stated. Yugito grunted, I still can't hit you. Naruto laughed, the warmth in his tone relaxing her, true, but that's because I'm not letting you use Nibi's chakra today like you normally do when we spar. Yugito said nothing as she got into a more comfortable position, only to moan when Naruto began to massage her back and shoulders, channeling chakra to his hands increasing the sensation. Naruto had been here for about six months, working on being able to better utilize Kyuubi's chakra with the help of Yugito and Killer B. During this time he had met the members of Team Samui which Naruto learned were students of B's. Kairu a young dark-skinned woman with red hair and yellow eyes, she wore a long black battle kimono with a modified armored sword holster. Amoi a man with dark skin, light yellow hair and red eyes, he wore black onbu clothing with white bandages around the ankles and sword holster like Kairu's. You could usually find him with a lowly pop in his mouth. The last member of Team Samui who was also their leader was Samui Ni, Yugito's older sister. She had short blonde hair that went down to her shoulders, and she wore a revealing skirt with a shirt, and had a body comparable to that of Tsunade, since she had fair skin, blonde hair, and very large breasts. She also wore what appeared to be a sheath strapped horizontally across her lower back. They were an odd group to say the least, Amoe and Kairo were always arguing with each other about one thing or another. Amoe would usually overthink things, which seemed to piss off Kairo who would hit him. Samui was fairly quiet and would often talk about how much her back hurt, apparently her breasts were so large that her frame could not support them. Naruto had decided to help her out by giving her a back message, which had seemed to endear the woman to him as she would often come by his hotel after a mission to get one. Though after Jiraiya had caught them and began crying about how his precious student had gotten two hot blonde Kumo girls Naruto had gone to her place instead. Of course this did not sit well with Yugito and she had gotten very pissed when she saw Naruto giving the large-chested woman a back rub. Of course Yugito refused to say why it bothered her so much, but Naruto knew the reason and had easily made it up to the young blonde woman. By making her sushi. When not training with Killer B most of his time he had spent with Yugito, who had shown Naruto many of her favorite spots when she wanted to be alone or at least away from some of the more ignorant shinobi who were jealous of her status or when they or the villagers stared at her with lust. Naruto had also much to the secret delight of the beautiful blonde taken her on several more dates. Naruto had become very protective of Yugito over the last six months as well, something Jiraiya had made a point to tease him about constantly, though he stopped when Naruto actually went through on his promise and gave him a Rasengan enema that sent him flying out of Kumo. During one of the dates he took her on Naruto had overheard two low-ranking ninja talking about how they were jealous and wished they could get in the pants of the demon. Naruto had taken them outside and made an example out of them showing what happens when someone disrespects his friends, by literally removing the appendage that made them male. After that no one had dared talk bad about Yugito in his presence, though Naruto found it odd that no one seemed to have a problem with B yet several ninja and civilians seemed to have an issue with Yugito. Naruto had been reprimanded by A after that incident, though he got the feeling that the man was actually grateful. Also it seemed that Jiraiya had also become weary of him afterwards, since Naruto had threatened the man with castration should he catch Jiraiya spying on him and Yugito. Speaking of A Naruto had sparred with the man a few times and had to admit he was extremely impressed. While not as fast as him or as varied in the ninja arts he was definitely powerful and completely outclassed him in taijutsu. Especially when A used the Raten no Yoroi, lightning armor, which allowed the bulky rakage speed and strength far superior to Naruto. The blonde had learned that the jutsu sped up a person's neural synapses increasing their speed, strength and reflexes by a factor of 4. The only way the blonde could keep up with him was when Naruto used Kyuubi's chakra, even then it was hard since A had sparred with Killer B many times. He could have used the Hiraishin of course but he did not want to draw attention to himself. Naruto himself had earned the man's respect after their first spar and had been asked to have one again with him as well as an arm wrestling match. He felt Yugito start to sway and realize that if he did not stop she would fall asleep. Taking his hands off her back Naruto used his water affinity to draw in the moisture from the air before freezing it into a wall which he leaned against pulling Yugito with him and wrapping his arms around her waist. Even if she had wanted to Yugito doubted she could have resisted, her body felt like it had been turned into a pile of warm goop by Naruto's magic hands. With a slight blush she wondered what else he could do with his hands. 
They stayed like that for about 15 minutes before Naruto broke the silence, Uro-sensei and I are going to be leaving tomorrow. Yugito who had wiggled onto her side looked up at him in surprise and sadness, so soon? She asked. I mean you've only been here for six months and I thought that well. She trailed off. How could she tell him how she felt, she could not even admit it to herself. She was broken from her thoughts when Naruto lifted her face to meet his, unfortunately Uro-sensei saying it's time to move on. I've learned a lot while I was here and even though I can't fully control the QB's chakra the old pervert feels it's enough for now, we've spent all the time we can hear. I understand, Yugito said her voice was far softer than normal. Naruto tightened his hold on her waist bringing her closer to him as he put his forehead against hers. Don't think that this is the last time we will see each other Yugito-chan, Naruto said in a warm and compassionate voice. Naruto sat up straight as he reached into his cloak and pulled out one of the oddest kunai that Yugito had ever seen. It was several inches bigger than standard kunai and had strange symbols that Yugito recognized as seals along the handle, it had a tri-pronged blade rather than one blade. What's this? She asked as Naruto handed her the kunai. That is how you will be able to see me again, whenever you are in need of help or want someone to talk to, just throw that kunai into a wall and I will come. Seeing Yugito's confused look he decided to elaborate, that kunai is the secret to one of the most powerful jutsu in the world and was what gave my father his nickname. It took a second to realize what he was talking about, Naruto had confidentially told her who his parents were so she knew he was the son of the Kirov Senko, though Naruto had a sneaking suspicion that A also knew this. When she figured out what this kunai was for her eyes widened, Hiraishin. She breathed out. She looked at the kunai in awe, this was for the technique that had won the third great ninja war. The jutsu that created fear amongst Iwa and gave a man the first and only ever SS rank in the bingo books. And Naruto was giving it to her essentially telling her that he would always be there for her. Now there are some rules that you need to follow when using this, Naruto said getting her attention. The most important rule is that you cannot use this around others, I don't want to end up starting a war with Iwa because of this, so the less people who know the better. Also when using it just to limit it to when you really need me, like you are in danger, you can also use it once every two weeks just so we can see each other. Because of my duties I may not always be able to come if you just use it whenever you feel like it, this will ensure that I come every time you use it. Yugito nodded as she looked at him, thank you, Naruto-kun. Naruto ears perked as a sly grin crossed his face, there's no need to thank me Yugi-chan, after all being able to spend time with a woman as beautiful as you is always a pleasure. Yugito blushed, thank you I've always found it pleasurable to be with you as well. Her eyes widened and her face heated up as she realized how her words could be taken, I mean I always found your company to be. Her rambling was stopped as Naruto put a finger to her lips, no need to get so flustered I was only teasing. Yugito puffed out her cheeks as she pouted, before they both burst out laughing. When the laughter died down Yugito did something that she probably would have never done had she thought about it, leaning into him she claimed his mouth with her own. Naruto while surprised that she had actually taken the imitative recovered admirably and kissed back, deciding not to be outdone he wrapped his arms around her waist and pulled her close gently snaking his tongue into her mouth causing the young woman to let out a moan he began to explore. He was actually surprised that she did not taste like sushi considering how much of the stuff she ate, her mouth tasted sweet reminding him of vanilla ice cream. He decided not to think about it and just enjoy the feeling as Yugito began to use her own tongue in their little duel. Taking her by surprise Naruto wrapped his own tongue around hers and pulled it into his mouth, allowing her to explore. At first she only probed him tentatively, she had never actually kissed anyone before so she was not sure what to do, with a little prodding from Naruto however she soon began to feel her way around with vigor. She found out that Naruto tasted a lot like ramen, much to her amusement. As she continued tasting her fellow blonde Yugito felt as light as a feather, her stomach was doing flip-flops and there was an intense heat that she had never felt before as she was swept away by the sensations and taste of Naruto. It was everything she had ever imagined a kiss would be. Despite being a strong and powerful Kunoichi who hated being dependent on others she still had the same desire to eventually find love, no matter how much she would try to deny it. Deciding to take this elsewhere Naruto picked Yugito up bridal style and disappeared in a swirl of leaves. XXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXX
Yugito herself had that afterglow that woman seemed to get after sex as she stood there, though there was also a slight melancholic look on her face. It was rather easy for everyone to see how much the young woman would miss Naruto, he had done more for her and spent more time with her than anyone besides A and B. So I guess this is it? Yugito asked trying to be stoic. Naruto smiled as he cupped her left cheek rubbing his thumb along the smooth skin, yeah. But it won't be the last time you see me so I wouldn't worry too much. You gonna have to come back soon, to help me make some tunes, yo. Naruto blinked as Killer B came up to him and started rapping again, he shook his head as he chuckled. Sorry but I don't think I can help you rap, or improve your rap. But if you need a good fight look me up. B grinned, that's all I need yo. Just give me a fight and I'll do things right fool. Shut up B. Yugito jumped up and kicked him in the head, causing everyone to chuckle. I do hope you'll come back soon, Samui said as Shiamoe and Kairo came up to him, I'm going to miss your messages. She rubbed her neck in emphasis. Yugito growled at her but Naruto just laughed, then I'll be sure to visit when I can, wouldn't want you to get all cramped up and unable to even perform your duty as a kunoichi would we? Amoe came up to him and did something no one would have expected, reaching into his bag he pulled out a sucker and handed it to Naruto. I figured you could use one for the road, he said as Naruto took it. Thanks, Naruto said as he unwrapped the sucker, putting it in his mouth. How come you give him a sucker but not me? Kairo asked with her hands on her hips. She had asked Amoe for suckers on numerous occasions but he would never give her one. Because, Amoe rubbed the back of his head, you're always so violent and loud, why can't you be quieter like our big-breasted teammate? Perhaps if you... He was cut off as Kairo smashed her fist into his face, sending the man flying, asshole. A shook his head as he moved over and shook Naruto's hand, make sure you come back to visit, I could use another spar soon, perhaps you'd even be able to compete with me in an arm wrestling match again. Naruto chuckled, of course. As soon as he let go of the rakage's hand Yugito came up and glomped him, nearly knocking the boy off balance as he was forced to readjust his footing. Naruto smiled as he wrapped his arms around the blonde woman, rubbing her back in a soothing manner, hey come on now, I told you this won't be the last time you see me. Whenever you need me just throw my kunai. I know, Yugito said as she held him tighter, make sure you're careful. The last thing I need is for my fiancé to go and get himself killed, she said in a small whisper. Naruto laughed as he kissed Yugito on the head you should know I'm always careful. Aha, uh -huh, Yugito said looking up with a deadpan expression, not believing that for a second, that's why you tried fighting both B and Rekage Sama at the same time, right? Naruto looked sheepish, er. Well I just wanted to make sure I could fight two powerful ninja at the same time is all, you know to get ready for when I face Akatsuki. Naruto turned his head away from her, getting nervous from the way she was staring straight through him. Come on Gaki you can make kissy face with your girlfriend when you come back, Jiraiya yelled already walking away. I'm coming Uro sensei Kami can I even say goodbye? He looked back at everyone and gave them a two-fingered salute, I'll see you guys around. He took off at a quick jog to catch up to Jiraiya. I wouldn't worry too much about that young man, Killer B said as he put a hand on Yugito's shoulder, he's not the type to go and kick the can. Yo. Be shut up, Yugito said as she sent another kick at his head. The Hachibi Jinchuriki chuckled as he stood up and walked off, Yugito looked back out where Naruto had been for a second before leaving as well. XXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXX
Inside his office A watched as the giant two-tailed cat rampaged the city and shook his head, great now I'm gonna have to pay for damages again. At least my assistant can't complain about it being me this time. Chapter 4, Icha Icha the Movie. You want me to do what? Please Tsuchikage-sama. Onedo Kazuchi pleaded with the old cage, the son of that man is alive. This is our chance for revenge, at least let me take a small task force to kill him. Onedo Kazuchi was a tall man standing at a height of 6 feet 4 inches with scraggly black hair and green eyes, he was wearing the standard jonin garb of Iwa. After Onedo had graduated the academy he had pushed himself harder than all of his peers, rising to the rank of jonin within just a few years. Onedo had been nothing more than a child during the Third Great Shinobi War when one Minato Namikaze had decimated their ninja forces. However both his parents and older brother had been in the war and were in that battle where Minato used the Hiraishin and killed them. Because of that Onedo had grown bitter and vengeful, often complaining about how it was too bad the Flash was dead so he couldn't kill the man himself. Upon learning that the Kirov Senko had a son who was still alive he had immediately went to the Tsuchikich. However the son Daimate Tsuchikich had not only refused his request to have the son that man killed, but had also told him not to go looking for trouble. The Tsuchikage a man who went by the name Ilnoki was an old man with a triangular shaped beard and a mustache, he had a large red nose and thick eyebrows, and the top of his head was bald, although he had a small patch of hair on the sides of his head which were pulled back into a knot. Ilnoki was an extremely old man with a great deal of pride and a stubborn streak to boot, many people in Iwa described him as the stubborn old man. However while he was proud and hated the Yondame Hokage as much as the next person in Iwa he was also smart, he had been one of the few people to ever fight Madara and live and had not been the Tsuchikage through several wars for being stupid. We've already been over this, Ilnoki grumbled irritably as he looked at Onedo, we do not have the strength to deal with this man. If we send our men out to kill this Naruto Namikaze we will be sending them to their deaths, or have you already forgotten the rumors that came from Kiri? Not only that, but he is with Jiraiya of the Senen, who will no doubt be protecting the boy making it even harder to kill him. What he did not tell Onedo was that even if they killed the son of Minato it would most likely end up being the catalyst that started the Fourth Great War and destroyed their village. Ilnoki had been hearing rumors about a Naruto Uzumaki long before the incident in Kiri that made his heritage known, the boy was considered a hero to several countries in the elemental nations. Not only that, but the old Tsuchikage had received information that a, the Yondaime Reikage had come to respect the boy. If Iwagakura were to even make an attempt on the boy's life they would have to deal not only with Konoha and Suna, but also Kiri, Kumo, Takigakur, Yukigakur and several other nations. But Tsuchikage sama I said enough, Ilnoki said not even deigning to look up from his paperwork, to even make an attempt would not only end in failure but also end in Iwagakura's destruction. Seriously, young ones these days. Onedo stared at the Tsuchikage for a moment, squeezing his hands so hard they began to bleed as his nails dug into his palm. He made a quick bow before leaving, stomping down the hallway of the Tsuchikage's tower. He narrowed his eyes in anger at the old man's cowardice, they had to strike now, not only for revenge but to kill the boy before he got too powerful. If the Tsuchikage would not do it, then he would have to take matters into his own hands and kill this Naruto Namikaze himself. In a large cavernous room there was a large grotesque statue, with nine eyes that were currently closed as it held out its hands. On the fingers of those hands were nine holographic figures who were currently having a meeting, not much could be seen about these figures except for their general outline and eyes. You say you have gotten information about the nine tails? Asked one figure that had spiky hair and odd grey eyes with a purple ripple pattern in them. Yes it seems he was in Kiri, the people there have started calling him a hero, said a person who looked like a man that was eaten by a giant Venus fly trap and managed to get his head part way out. A hero huh? Smirked one of the other figures, this one with a shark-like eyes and a large sword strapped to his back. Yes apparently he saved the country and stopped the bloodline civil war, the plant man said, information has come out that he destroyed an entire army with a single jutsu and fought and killed the Jinchuriki cage Yagura afterwards. For a long moment silence reigned as the implications sunk in, when it did the people in the room had several different reactions. The one with the ripple eyes got a somewhat troubled look while the one next to him, a female with amber-colored eyes remained impassive. The one who looked like a shark had his eyes widened before a smirk adorned his face. One who had a pair of blood-red eyes with three tomoe in them had widened in shock before going back to their passive look. A figure that had a hunchback remained impassive, while a figure with blonde hair that covered one a looked surprised and a partially scared. Another figure with slick-backed white hair didn't seem to care, while a figure with black eyes had no visible reaction. This is troubling, said the figure with the ripple eyes. That's not all, 
the one who looked like he had been eaten by a Venus flightwrap said, apparently the claim is that the QB Jin Churiki is the son of the Kirov Senko and used the infamous Hiraishin to destroy the army. That caused an even larger ripple of worry to move through the entire room, everyone knew about the man who was considered to be one of the most powerful shinobi to grace the elemental nations. If the QB Jin Churiki was the son of that man and able to use such a powerful technique it could be trouble. While this information is unwelcome our plans remain unchanged, the one with the ripple eyes said at last. We will continue gathering information on the other Jin Churiki and Baiju, we will save the QB for last. The other images nodded at their apparent leader's words and phased out of existence, as they did a lone shadow appeared on one of the fingers. So the QB Jin Churiki is the son of that man, and to think he was able to beat my puppet. I should have realized this. He may become a problem in the future. The shadow soon disappeared as well, leaving the area to appear as if it was untouched. Naruto closed his eyes and took a deep breath as he stood on the bow of the ship he and Uro-sensei were on known as the Lady Luck, enjoying the feel of the ocean breeze against his skin. He and Uro-sensei were on their way to Haru no Kuni, the place he had saved with Team 7 before he had left on his training trip. He was intrigued and curious about the reason they could be heading there but like always his sensei would just smirk and say he had some business to take care of there. Still he couldn't complain and was looking forward to seeing his friend Koyuki Kazaana again. He absently wondered how she was doing with her double career as both a daimyo and actress. It would be good to see how she was doing. Do you need something sensei? Asked Naruto not even bothering to turn around. Jiraiya shook his head and grinned at his student. The boy had come a long way in the last two and a half years, going from a loud mouth braggart to a man with the calm of a seasoned shinobi. The toad senin was proud to see how strong and mature his godson was becoming though he still seemed to keep a playful attitude and penchant for pranks, as evidenced by the time Jiraiya had found himself hanging over the woman's side of a hot spring naked with the word super pervert written in big bold letters on his ass. Of course he had made a comment asking Naruto how it was to sleep with that hot blonde woman Yugito, so he supposed it was sort of his fault. Walking up beside his prized pupil and godson Jiraiya looked out over the water, sharing a comfortable silence between the two. We'll be entering port sometime tomorrow, Jiraiya finally said as he turned to look at Naruto. Naruto nodded having already known this, so what will I be learning during our time here? Now that we have worked on gaining experience, your physical capabilities, elemental manipulation and trump card I'm going to be teaching you how to better work with the toads. Naruto looked at Jiraiya as he began to explain what he meant, I am sure you've seen some of the jutsu I can create when in conjunction with the toads as well as specific summoning techniques that do more than just summon a toad to battle. Naruto nodded, you mean like that Kushios, Gamaguchi Shibari, summoning jutsu, toad mouth bind, jutsu you used when we had our run-in with Itachi and Kisame? Jiraiya grinned, yep. These techniques are very powerful and something that only we can do because of our contract with the toads, as we travel to the Haru capital I'm going to have you summon the different toads and get to know them and their abilities better. After that we'll do some sparring with toad partners so you can get a feel for what's it's like working with toads other than Gamabunta, Gamashiki, and Gamatatsu. Then we'll begin working on the specialized toad ninjutsu. Naruto grinned as he felt somewhat giddy at the prospect of learning the toad techniques, the toads who reside on Mount Mayaboku were well known to possess a wide range of abilities, anything from spitting water and oil out of their mouths to utilizing weapons in combat. The toads were also one of the few species that had the ability to do ninjutsu, and the only animal Naruto knew that was capable of using hand signs. Naruto knew that Jiraiya was well known for his jutsu that mainly consisted of toad-based abilities, it was the main reason the man had earned his nickname as the Toad Senin. The knowledge that Naruto was going to be one of only two other people to learn the toad-based jutsu was enough to almost make him shout out his joy from the top of ship. Almost. Naruto looked around the large capital city of Haru no Kuni with a large smile, it had been a long time since he had been here and could not help but enjoy seeing how the city had prospered. Originally known as Yuki no Kuni due to the fact that the country had always been in a never-ending winter, it had been renamed after Dodo had unwittingly activated a heating generator designed to melt the snow. Naruto chuckled to himself at how furious the man had been when that happened, as well as how the man got a Rasengan to the gut for his troubles. After that Koyuki and the members of the original court that had been under Koyuki's father had renamed the land Haru because it was now always spring. The country had become very popular since then it seemed. Everywhere Naruto looked he saw hundreds of people going about their business. Stores and restaurants of all kinds lined the streets, many people were looking around and taking pictures or shopping for the latest wares or technology that the place was known for. As they continued walking Naruto noticed they were coming up on the palace that housed Koyuki, 
The blonde frowned as he began to wonder what Jiraiya's business was and if it had something to do with the woman he had saved. He ignored the small shiver that ran down his spine as they were granted entrance. Walking down the hall they came to a large set of double doors which a pair of butlers opened for them, walking in Naruto found himself staring at the beautiful form of Koyuki Kazaana who was currently sitting behind a desk, reading from a scroll. Naruto looked at the young woman as they made their way to her, in all honesty she had not changed much from the beautiful woman he had fist met back then. Her hair was still its long dark blue color which brought out a contrast with her light blue eyes. She was currently wearing the royal kimono of a daimyo which was thick and managed to hide the luscious curves of her body, which Naruto knew from the one time during the filming of the movie when he had been a guard and had been ordered to retire of her and she answered in her underwear was amazing. Koyuki Dono, it a pleasure to see you again, Jiraiya said with what he hoped was a charming voice. Koyuki looked up from whatever she was reading, ah, Jiraiya-san, Koyuki greeted as she stood up. I had not expected you to come here so soon, the director won't even be here for another month. Koyuki trailed off as her eyes latched onto the form of Naruto. Soon a small blush spread across the young daimyo's face as she looked at in her opinion was easily one of the most handsome men she had ever seen in her life. With a body that looked like it had been chiseled from stone, the young woman could see his muscles twitch with each small movement he made in the nearly skin-tight black shinobi clothing. His eyes were the most startling and beautiful blue she had ever seen while his face was had roguish good looks that combined with his wild golden blonde hair and whisker marks added a feral sex appeal. Wait. Whisker marks? Koyuki nearly did a double take as she looked at the whisker marks and finally realized she knew this man. She moved around Jiraiya, completely ignoring his presence and stopped once she stood in front of the young blonde, Naruto? She asked in a tentative voice. Naruto gave her his foxy grin, it's been a long time Koyuki Dono and it seems you've only gotten more beautiful in that time, I didn't think that was possible. Koyuki felt her face heating up at Naruto's words but being an actress she was able to keep most of it under control, and you have grown into a handsome young man, Koyuki said before surprising the blonde shinobi and engulfing him in a hug, though it was not long before Naruto returned it. I missed you, Koyuki admitted while buried in his well-muscled chest. Naruto blinked in surprise before he smiled and returned her hug, I missed you too Koyuki Haim. Koyuki pulled back from the hug but instead of letting go grabbed his arm and began dragging him out of the room walk with me, she said in what Naruto easily recognized as her daimyo voice and decided to comply with her command. Jiraiya looked after the two of them in surprise before a perverted grin spread across his features. I knew this gaki would be a gold mine for my research. Naruto found himself and Koyuki walking through one of the many gardens her palace had as the two of them talked, making light conversation which mainly consisted of Koyuki asking Naruto all kinds of questions about where he had been and what he had been doing. The two eventually stopped to sit on one of the benches located throughout the garden. Wow, I suppose I should have expected you to do something like that with your luck, Koyuki said as she listened to some of Naruto's stories. Naruto smiled, so what about you? He asked tilting his head to the side in what Koyuki thought was an adorable fashion. How have you been? Oh I've been alright, Koyuki replied, not much has been going on here that I would consider exciting. Except maybe the new movie I'm going to be starring in she added as an afterthought. You're not seriously considering maybe that movie are you? Asked Naruto, I mean it's pretty well. Perverted? Koyuki asked with a grin, yeah I know, the council has been harping about me making this movie too. But I still have a contract with my director that lasts for another two years and with his Princess Gale movies all finished. I see, Naruto nodded in understanding, so because of the contract you kind of have to make the movie. But couldn't you just, I don't know null and void it? Koyuki shook her head, no, at least not anymore. If a daimyo makes any kind of contract with anyone it always needs to be upheld, otherwise people would think I would not hold up any agreement I made. Also this director is the biggest one in the industry, if I were to deny him he would be able to blacklist me and keep me from making movies. Naruto nodded as that made sense since he had a nindo that was very similar to what she just said, contracts be they verbal or written out should always be upheld no matter what. He could also understand the blacklisting part, having been blacklisted by many of the stores in Konoha. I can understand and even respect that you're still going through with this decision, Naruto said. Thank you, it's nice to know someone understands, Koyuki replied. The rest of their time there was spent talking about how they had been doing the past two and a half years. Naruto sighed as he looked over at the director and Jiraiya making enthusiastic motions as the set was being made, most likely speaking about the movie. Seriously who would have guessed that the director was a pervert? 
He turned back to look at Koyuki who at the moment was talking to one of the maids about something, a small smile found its way to his lips. During the month he had been here he and Koyuki had been spending most of their free time together, the young blonde really enjoyed being in the presence and speaking with the beautiful daimyo. What do you mean your actor is sick? Naruto turned to look at Jiraiya who was the one shouting. Just what I said, the director replied, he came down with the flu about a week before we left. And you're just telling me this now? Asked an annoyed Toad Senen, knowing this would seriously put his beloved movie back. It hadn't come up until now, the man replied. This is just great, Jiraiya groaned as he palmed his face, now who are we gonna? He paused for a moment as he remembered something. Turning his head he looked over at Naruto with a large grin etched on his face. Oh no, Naruto said as he growled at Jiraiya, no way in hell am I gonna let you film me having sex, Naruto growled as he began leaking killing intent at Jiraiya, making the man pale. B, but I need you to do this for me please? Naruto growled at the man, he should have known his sensei would have some perverted alternative motive for coming here. But even he did not expect the man to do something like this, I'm not gonna do it get someone else to help you with your perverted scheme. Jiraiya gulped at his apprentice's glare, if looks could kill right now the white-haired man was sure he would have just been filleted like a fish with that glare. He knew his apprentice would not agree to this willingly which was why he had not said anything before now, come on. I need you to do me this one little favor. Naruto glared at his sensei, now listen here you perverted old coot, I told you no. There's no way I can do this, besides Koyuki-chan would not want to have sex with. I don't mind. Naruto and the others turned to look at Koyuki who had started listening in on the conversation and now looked like she was about to pass out due to all the blood rushing to her head. She had never told anyone but after Naruto had saved her and her country she had developed something of a small crush on him. Sure he had been a little kid back then but he had also been the one who understood her and came to her rescue when she needed him. And it's not like he was a little kid now. Koyuki fidgeted a little as she looked at the ground, I really wouldn't mind if it was with you Naruto-kun. In fact I would. Koyuki paused and took a deep breath and plunged on, in fact, I would feel much more comfortable if I was. Doing those scenes with you. Naruto faltered as he felt a small crack in his willpower, he had always had a weakness when it came to woman and this time was no different. I, I'm not sure. Please. Koyuki asked looking at him with a look that was somehow both extremely sexy and innocent at the same time. I wouldn't feel comfortable with anyone else. Naruto bit his lip, well. He paused before sighing, why don't we talk it over dinner and I'll come to a decision then. Koyuki looked at him with a small tint of pink staining her cheeks, you mean dinner like? A date? She asked. As the young female daimyo looked at Naruto she could not help but feel as if her heart was about to burst out of her chest, despite the time they had spent in the past month the two of them had not actually gone on a date, something Koyuki secretly wished she could do with the blonde shinobi. Another chip appeared in Naruto's reserve at seeing the young woman's hopeful face, he gave her a smile. If you would like it to be a date, I would be more than happy to take you out on one. Koyuki gave him a large smile that threatened to split her face as she grabbed his hand and dragged him out, telling him about where they were going and that they needed to get ready. Jiraiya gave a sigh of relief, I'm glad Koyuki Dono was here or there's no way Naruto would have agreed with this. He looked to where Naruto and Koyuki left and anime tears fell from his eyes, I'm so proud of him. The director looked at the white-haired Senen before shaking his head and focusing his attention to getting the set built. Many people stopped to watch as Naruto walked down the street with Koyuki on his arm, most of the females watching were wondering how Koyuki knew the hot young blonde while the men were jealous of Naruto for having the alluring and sexy daimyo and actress hanging off of his arm. Instead of asking Koyuki about how she had been like they had been doing for the past month, Naruto questioned the beautiful daimyo about some of the things she had been doing since with her job, Naruto was pleased to hear she had taken it upon herself to continue her father's legacy and was in the process of creating new and useful technology. She had also told him about how she had had the railroad rebuilt, they had fixed up and upgraded the trains to now use steam rather than coal allowing her to cease worrying about trying to procure the expensive import from Iwa. This allowed for faster travel throughout the country, making trading and moving goods and supplies much easier. Naruto had to admit to being impressed with the young woman's handling of things since she became daimyo. The two eventually arrived at an expensive-looking restaurant where the waiter nearly stumbled over himself as he escorted Naruto and their very own daimyo Koyuki blabbering away about how honored he was to serve them. As the two sat across from each other in a small booth Koyuki decided to ask Naruto about himself, so what exactly has your sensei trained you in? A, Uro-sensei has been training me in all aspects of being a shinobi? 
Naruto started making Koyuki laugh at the perverted nickname he gave Jiraiya. He's been training in ninjutsu, taijutsu, fuinjutsu and I've also been learning strategy. Recently he's been teaching me the toad ninjutsu he's known for. Naruto told her, telling her of some of the jutsu he had been learning as well as some of his own techniques. Sounds like you've gotten really strong, Koyuki said with a tone that spoke of how impressed she was. The young daimyo then got a sly grin on her face, I also hear you've become the hero in Mizu no Kuni, which you neglected to tell me, she finished. Yeah sorry I just. Don't feel comfortable talking about the war I took part in, Naruto side ran a hand through his hair as he sighed, but yes I did help them end the bloodline wars. Though I really didn't do that much. You're far too modest, Koyuki laughed at seeing Naruto uncomfortable for being considered a hero. I heard you were able to defeat the entire army with a single jutsu, Yukigakur even has you in our bingo books. Yukigakur had been the hidden village that was created by Dodo, who used its ninja to kill his brother Setsu Kazaana and take over as daimyo, afterwards he had chosen the three best in the village to become his personal bodyguards. After Dodo's defeat Koyuki had allowed the village to remain and helped fund the village so it could begin training younger generations, Naruto had heard that Koyuki had let the village remain as long as they pledged their loyalty to her. He had also found out that they were using Konoha's academy as the basis for their own. Really? Naruto asked in surprise, he had not even realized that he was in the bingo books, though he supposed it was only a matter of time before it happened. Yep. Koyuki grinned as she took a bingo book out of her dress. Do you always carry a bingo book with you? Asked Naruto with an amused smile. Usually yes, Koyuki replied as she flipped through the pages. I thought it would be a good idea to have one on hand just in case you know? Naruto nodded in understanding as Koyuki handed him the book, taking a look Naruto saw that the stats were his own. Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze. Recent title, Naidaim Kirov Senko, Second Yellow Flash. Rank, S. Physical description, wears black shinobi clothing with a black hooded cloak, spiky blonde hair, blue eyes with three whisker marks on each cheek. Statistics. Ninjutsu, Ten is well known for having mastered many powerful jutsu such as the Rasengan, Hiraishin as well as several upgraded versions of the Rasengan and many elemental techniques. Rumor has it he has created several powerful jutsu that are S-class and above. Taijutsu, nine taijutsu said to be nearly on par with the Yondaime Reikage who is well known for his impressive hand-to-hand -hand combat. Genjutsu, N.A., not known to use Genjutsu. Kenjutsu, Nine not much is known but he is said to use a sword that was especially made for him a Tetsu no Kuni. Kinjutsu, 10, aside from Cage Bushin it was rumored that he created a Kinjutsu with a classification of SS class. Fuinjutsu rumor claims that he is a seal master that surpasses Jiraiya of the Senen and is on par with the Yondaime Hokage. Elemental Affinities, Fuutin, Raiten, and Sutin. Warning, if you end up in a fight with this man it is suggested that you run. Naruto raised an eyebrow at the information, it was a fairly accurate account of his abilities though there were a lot of gaps in it. He was actually grateful for that since it would mean he was still something of an unknown, this would give him a large advantage should people try to come and kill him. I had no idea I was that famous, Naruto said as he handed the book back to Koyuki, I mean I knew this would get out eventually but. You've been famous for a while now, she told him, with a smile after all you were in the Princess Gale movie. Naruto laughed, that's true I remember I went to go see it, I was surprised when I saw myself launching a Rasengan into your uncle in your movie. The waiter came up to take their orders with Naruto ordering Kaiseki Ryori, an expensive dish with a number of small dishes, steamed, simmered and grilled, often includes raw fish, grilled fish, tempura, soup, rice and other foods. While Koyuki ordered Tora Fugu, blowfish, with a side order of rice and steamed vegetables. The pair sat in companionable silence as they waited for their meal to arrive, each of them having their own thoughts. Naruto looked over at Koyuki as he thought about the situation he now found himself in, it's not that he had a serious issue in sleeping with Koyuki. They had been friends after his mission to protect her and the two had been able to send a few messages every now and then, he did like her and knew they were fairly close in spite of not seeing each other for a few years. However Naruto did not want to have sex with her just for some porn movie and would want to be more than just a the guy she had sex with for a movie, but he knew that a relationship with her would be hard. She was a daimyo and ruled an entire country, that not only took a lot of her time but it also presented a problem if he ever wanted to marry her. A daimyo could never marry unless it was with nobility, either another daimyo or a prince or princess was usually a requirement, and Naruto didn't think that the prince of the now defunct Uzu no Kuni, Whirlpool country, counted. 
Naruto stuck a small seal under the table activating a silencing barrier so any conversation between them stayed private. Hey Koyuki-chan, Naruto started getting the young woman's attention, so. Why exactly did you want me to be your um? The blonde cursed as he felt his face heat up. He hadn't been this embarrassed since the first time he started talking to girls outside of Konoha. Why do I want you to do the sex scene in the movie with me? Koyuki finished his question for him, the only sign Naruto could see of her being embarrassed was the small tint of pink on her cheeks. Naruto nodded and she smiled as she closed her eyes, well, there are many reasons I suppose. When I first agreed to star in this movie I was afraid it would be someone random actor I would feel uncomfortable with and who would no doubt use this scene as bragging rights about how he had sex with a daimyo. So you felt that since we were friends it would be better to have me do it? Naruto asked with a small frown. Koyuki squirmed a bit as she lowered her head, does that bother you? Naruto sighed as he stood up and sat down next to her, gently raising her head so that her eyes were looking at his. No I understand why you feel that way, I know that I wouldn't want to do something like this with someone I was not familiar with. Of course I doubt I would want to do it at all, Naruto said with a small chuckle. I'm not upset or bothered by it, I just have several reasons why I would be really uncomfortable with doing this. Why? Asked Koyuki, I mean if it was any other male being asked to do this I'm sure they would be bragging from here to Konoha. Naruto smiled, that may be true, but you see I already have someone I plan on marrying and the possibility of getting another once I ask her, Koyuki looked at him in shock. Two fiancés? She asked with an owlish expression. Naruto nodded and began to explain to her about the clan restoration act that had been set down when Konoha was founded. Koyuki listened to Naruto with a sort of odd detachment as she thought about what he was telling her, in all honesty it did not sound as odd to her as it may have sounded to a civilian. She had studied up on ninja villages and most of their laws so she knew that they had things like this, especially if one of the clans that held a bloodline was about to go extinct, it was also well known that several of the male daimyos in the elemental nations had either multiple wives or concubines. She knew that Naruto had a clan because of his father as well. When word spread that Naruto was the son of the Hokage a lot of the different royal families in various countries had actually talked about forming an with Konoha alliance through marriage, her own council had been one of those that approved of him when he was brought up as a potential candidate for marriage. However she did not know about the CRA and she was sure that the others on her council did not know or they would have brought it up. She focused all of her attention back to Naruto who seemed to be finishing his small speech. And that's why I don't feel comfortable doing this. I don't want to have sex with you just for some movie. Koyuki twirled her hair between her fingers, so if it was for more than just the movie you would? If we were getting married I would, Naruto corrected, had it been two years ago I probably would too, but now that I actually have one woman who I already know I'm marrying and another I plan on asking when I see her next, I don't want to betray their trust by having sex and then having it shown in front of every pervert in the elemental nations in a movie. Koyuki smiled as she listened to him. It seemed that Naruto was a romantic at heart even when he had to marry multiple women. So say we could get married, Koyuki stated, if we did you wouldn't mind? Naruto looked at her as he thought about it, I suppose it wouldn't be as bad then, but. Then there's no problem, she interrupted him, I'll just go to the council and tell them we're going to get married. Naruto blinked before staring at her like she had grown a second head with four eyes and a sharp row of fangs, it couldn't be that easy could it? Also aren't you making this decision a little too quickly? Well there may be a few problems since you have to be with at least three other women besides me, Koyuki said. But since I am the daimyo I ultimately have the decision of who I get to wed, and since your name came up a number of times when the council spoke to me about getting married they won't make the CRA as big of a deal as they would with someone else. She looked down at the table, as for moving too fast, the council has actually been asking me to take a husband soon. I don't want to end up in some loveless marriage. And you're okay with me getting married with other women? Naruto asked incredulously. Koyuki shrugged, I understand why you may have to go through with it, I have read up on clan laws for various villages to better understand their workings so I know that the circumstances you find yourself in are not as unusual as they would normally seem. I may not quite approve but. She paused for a second to lean on his shoulder. I'm willing to work with it. I'll be honest, when you saved me both from Dodo and my own darkness I had wondered many times if we could somehow be together after you grew up. I hope that's not some dig on how childish I was, Naruto said with a mock pout, instinctively wrapping an arm around her waist and pulling her closer. Koyuki giggled, maybe. Naruto made a few sniffling sounds, that's cold Koyuhaim, very cold. Naruto pulled off the silencing seal and a few minutes later dinner came, 
the waiter blinking in surprise as he noticed the new position the two were in before setting the food down. The two became quiet as they opted to enjoy the food in silence, when they were done Naruto and Koyuki made a little more conversation on some of the lighter subjects while waiting for the bill to come. If we're going to go through with the marriage, do you think it would be alright if we at least went on several dates first? Asked Naruto. I would at least like to get to know you a bit better in a more intimate setting before we take such a large step. Of course, Koyuki said with a smile as the bill came, I wouldn't have it any other way. She was just about to grab the bill when Naruto got to it first, I've got it, he said. But shouldn't I get that, I mean. If it's money you're worried about, don't, Naruto said with a smile, because of my books I've currently got about 36 figures in my account. Koyuki tilted her head to the side as he stared at him quizzically, what book is that? This one, Naruto said as he channeled chakra into a seal on his wrist, Koyuki gasped found herself staring at a book with a dark blue cover. However that was not what had gotten her attention, what had was the title of the book. You wrote this. She breathed. Naruto ignored the tone as he nodded, yep I did, why do you? Naruto stopped talking as he turned around to face Koyuki and saw that she was staring at him, with stars in her eyes. Looking at her hands he saw she was holding the book out to him, Naruto blinked as he wondered how the book had just appeared in her hand. This book is my absolute favorite. Koyuki squealed sounding almost like a fangirl, do you think you could sign it for me? Um. Sure, Naruto said as he grabbed the book and unsealed the brush he used to make seals, channeling some chakra into the seal on the brush he activated the ink creation seals. To Koyuki Kazahan one of the most beautiful and stunning woman I know, love Naruto. How does that sound to you? Naruto asked as he looked over at Koyuki only to sweat drop as hearts appeared in her eyes. That sounds perfect, she said as she grabbed the book. Naruto blinked as the book disappeared again and Koyuki leaned into his side with a dreamy sigh, I wonder if she is using seals to keep that book with her. After the meal was paid for Naruto and Koyuki went back to the palace, entering the room with all of the people running around still trying to get the set built. Naruto spotted Jiraiya and the director over near a table discussing something, with Koyuki on his arm he walked over to the two. Coughing to get their attention Naruto started to speak, I've spoken with Koyuhime here and have agreed to do this. Before the two could even so much as grin Naruto sent them a glare. But I want one thing made clear, you two officially owe both me and Koyuki Haim for doing this, I expect that payment to be returned in full as well as have several requests to make. The two reluctantly nodded their heads and Naruto gave them a grin that sent several shivers of fear down their spines. First, Naruto held up a hand with a finger pointed out, no one will get to watch while the two of us do the sex scene. Jiraiya opened his mouth to complain but Naruto beat him to it, if you don't like it you can find someone else. Jiraiya begrudgingly shut his mouth as Naruto continued, you can set up several cameras in a room but no one will get to see the results until we're done. Second I expect you Uro-sensei to write a letter to both Mei Terumi and Yugido Ni about how you forced me to do this by blackmailing Koyuki and I. Hey now wait just a minute. Jiraiya interrupted, you can't expect me to do that, they'll kill me. First off Mei is more likely to melt your balls off before killing you while Yugito would probably go Nibi on your ass. But it shouldn't matter to you, after all you should be used to woman trying to kill you Uro-sensei, Naruto said with a smirk, after all the times you've peeped on woman and gotten the shit beat out of you, you should be practically immune to this stuff. I'm also going to proofread the letter and make sure I know what you are writing as well as watch you send it, just in case you try to do something I might not like. Jiraiya gulped knowing this was not going to end well for him, but for the sake of his movie he nodded. And the last request? Jiraiya asked. Naruto grinned as the shadows from his hair covered his eyes giving him an eerie look, making Jiraiya pale. The last request is when we get to Konoha I'm going to have you tell Tsunade why I was in your porn movie when she finds out. Jiraiya's eyes widened to epic proportions as he became as white as a sheet, the thought of going to tell Tsunade that he had convinced her grandson slash son figure to star in his Icha Icha movie was quite possibly the worst out of all three requests. Telling the other girls would not be nearly as bad since they could never hope to match what his buxom teammate could do, Tsunade would no doubt string him up by his balls, beat the shit out of him then use his manhood as a punching back before she killed him. Images of all the pain Tsunade would no doubt inflict upon their return ran through his head and Jiraiya did the only thing he could do in this situation. He fainted. Onedo grinned as he looked at the man who was helping him and the few people he brought along, people who Onedo had managed to join him in this quest after hearing they were going after the son of the Kirov Senko. You better hold up your end of the deal, Onedo told the man who scowled at him. Of course I will, the man said, 
so long as you hold up yours and kill Koyuki Kazana. I can't stand having that woman doing what should be a man's job, and to make matters worse she's filming that movie. Yeah yeah whatever, Oneto replied, I already told you I'd get it done after I kill the Namikaze brat. Though I hear she is quite beautiful so I think have a little fun with her first. Finally his chance for revenge had come. Four months later. Naruto and Koyuki were resting against a tree in the backyard of the palace after finishing up one of the scenes for the movie, and were now taking a break. Naruto closed his eyes and leaned back as he pulled Koyuki in between his legs, said woman letting out a content sigh with a small smile on her face as she too closed her eyes to get some rest. It had been four months since he had come here and agreed to be in his sensei's perverted movie, he had a newfound respect for Koyuki's ability as an actress. He had never realized not only how hard it was to memorize lines but also how embarrassing it was, Naruto could not even count the number of times he had felt his face turn so red it looked like it was about to burst, of course it could have something to do with the fact that the movie he was doing was porn and almost all of the lines were of a perverted and sleazy nature. It had taken Naruto about two months just to get over his embarrassment at some of the lines he had to say. He had also made sure to go out on a few more dates with Koyuki, often taking her for dinner and walks around some of the parks she had made around the palace. Doing so had allowed them to get to know things about each other that they had not known before, like Koyuki had a fear of snow rabbits after one had bitten her when she was a child. Of course Naruto had laughed at that, before Koyuki gave him the glare that all women seemed to possess making the young man pale, he never knew an actress could be so petrifying. To compensate he had told her of something he was afraid of, it was not known to anyone except Iruka but Naruto had a deathly fear of men with ridiculously long tongues. Of course only one man he knew of had a long tongue like that, ever since his encounter with Orochimaru in the forest of death where the snake man had wrapped his tongue around Naruto's neck he had gotten nightmares about it, especially after hearing of the man's fetish for little boys. Koyuki had not only found that funny but had made it a point to lick him as a greeting every morning afterwards, though it had the exact opposite effect that Orochimaru's tongue had given. Of course this had caused problems of another sort, Jiraiya had caught her straddling Naruto trying to lick the boy's face and began making several comments on how proud he was of Naruto. He not only got a resengan for his troubles but Koyuki had several of her samurai take him outside and hang him on a flag pole by his underwear. Of course Naruto had not slacked off in his training either, the blonde had met with each of the summons and gotten to know their abilities and weaknesses. He found out that some of them would not work as well with his fighting style but had gotten to know them anyway in the interest of keeping a good relation with the toads. Jiraiya had also taken to teaching him the toad techniques Jiraiya had learned those being the Kushios, Gamaguchi Shibari, which summoned the nearly indestructible esophagus of a great fire-breathing toad and allowed it to cover an entire area. The Gamata era Keiji Ayasuri no Jutsu, Toad Flat Shadow Manipulation Technique, allowing Naruto to become one with an enemy's shadow while at the same time paralyzing them allowing the blonde to use them as a human shield. The last one he had learned so far was the Gamagakur no Jutsu, hiding in a toad technique, where Naruto would hide in the stomach of a special diving toad from Mount Mayaboku. While Naruto had yet to learn all the other ones yet, but the ones he did know he had become proficient enough in them that Jiraiya and the toads were impressed. Naruto. Hmm? Naruto looked down at Koyuki who still had her eyes closed. What will you do once you become Hokage? She asked. What do you mean? Naruto tilted his head to the side as if trying to understand the question. Koyuki giggled at the cute and confused look Naruto had on his face, I mean what will you do after becoming Hokage? I've always wondered what you plan to do after you've accomplished that goal. Naruto looked at her for a moment as his eyes glazed over. Flashback. Naruto rubbed his eyes with his arms getting the tears out before he looked at Jiraiya with a smile, I guess I'll have to fix that when I become Hokage, ni? Jiraiya chuckled as he ruffled Naruto's hair, I guess so, but you won't become Hokage by moping about like this. True peace? Naruto asked in curiosity as he looked at his teacher. Jiraiya nodded, I believe the time will come when we eventually understand each other, the white-haired man laughed, though I don't know how to do that yet. He looked over at Naruto, if I can't find a way then you'll do it for me. Naruto grinned, you bet Uro-sensei. Flashback end. Naruto. Naruto. Naruto blinked as he looked down at Koyuki, I'm sorry Koyuhime what were you saying? Koyuki gave him worried glance for a second before giving him an exasperated look, though she still had a smile on her face. I was asking what you wanted to do after becoming Hokage. Ah. Right, Naruto chuckled as a sheepish grin spread across his face, well there are a lot of things I want to do. Koyuki waited for a moment to see if Naruto would tell her, 
After a few moments of waiting with no answer forthcoming she got exasperated. Well? She asked. Hmm. Well I could tell you, but where would the fun in that be if you didn't figure it out on your own, Naruto said with a small twinkle in his eyes. Koyuki gave him a scowl for a second before the two began to laugh, laying her head back down she closed her eyes and snuggled into Naruto's chest. Letting his warm presence engulf her as she listened to his heartbeat, Hey Naruto? She asked getting his attention. Do you have any names for when we have children? Naruto made several choking noises as he felt his face burn up, what? Come here Akako-chan, Takane said in a lustful voice as he moved towards Akako making grabbing motions with his hands. Akako backed up against the wall as she tried to resist, no I. We can't. Ah. She was cut off as Takane grabbed her luscious breasts with his hands and began to knead them. Leaning down Takane began nibble, kiss, lick and bite Akako along her neck. Leaving several love bites as Akako's struggling began to weaken. Eventually the busty young woman felt her resistance to Takane's advances disappear as she wrapped her arms around his neck and began grinding her sex along the ever-enlarging tent in his pants. Takane slipped one of his hands inside her shirt and bra as he caressed and groped the woman's enticing and pert tits, loving the feel of her soft and supple skin in his hands as he played with the hardened nipple. Ah! Takane, Akako gasped as she tried to form coherent thoughts and sentences. Hmm. Take me. Ah! Take me now. Please. I thought you'd never ask Akako-chan, Takane whispered in a husky voice as he began to nibble on her earlobe. And cut. The lights turned on revealing the people who were here, cameramen who began to take stop filming, the director who began to go on about how well the two acted and Jiraiya who was giggling perversely. Takane and Akako both took off the wigs they had been wearing, revealing them to be Naruto and Koyuki as the two walked off the set, so how did we do? Naruto asked having finally become desensitized to the acting he was required to do. You two did excellent. The director said with tears in his eyes, just what I would expect from two amazing actors as yourself. This movie will no doubt be a hit that rivals even my Princess Gale movies. Naruto sweat dropped as he watched the director burst into tears over a movie, shaking his head he looked at Koyuki with a smile. I guess that's a wrap then, the two chuckled at his corny joke before he continued. So I'll see you tonight? Of course, Koyuki said with a sultry smile, don't be late Naruto-kun. Naruto grinned as he kissed Koyuki on the cheek and grabbed Jiraiya by the hair pulling him along as said man went from complimenting his student to complaining about rude apprentices picking on their senseis. Koyuki smiled as she watched them go, before moving into her dressing room so she could get the movie makeup off. She looked herself over in the mirror as she finished scrubbing the last vestige of makeup off herself, smiling she was just about to change into some normal clothes when a knock came at her door. Come in. She called out absently as she turned around to see Naruto coming in her room. Oh Naruto-kun did you forget something? Or was it that you couldn't stand to be away from me? Koyuki asked with a grin. Naruto grinned as he walked up causing Koyuki to frown at how wrong it looked, actually it was neither. The young daimyo had no time to react as a cloth was smothered over her nose, Koyuki's eyes widened as she tried to struggle. Unfortunately whoever this imposter was far stronger than her and she felt her eyes flutter closed and eventually everything went black. Naruto grunted as he skidded back from the powerful slash, as soon as his backwards momentum ceased Naruto launched himself at his opponent again. A toad with two curved swords known as Gamataken, because Naruto had no set sword style he was having the toads who could use bladed weapons help him. They had agreed to teach them their style of fighting letting Naruto get accustomed to various toad sword katas, Naruto found that this was something he enjoyed the most when working with the toads and had created several kenjutsu moves that he and the toads he worked with used in conjunction. After blocking several more slashes and stabs Naruto and Gamataken jumped apart, bowing to each other. Excellent job young one, Gamataken said in a voice that was very similar to a samurai speaking to his apprentice, you are learning well. Thank you Gamataken sensei, Naruto said as he unsealed a bottle from his wrist and took a long drink. He looked over at the sky and realized that it was getting late, looking over at the sword fighting toad he bowed again, I must be getting back soon. It was nice studying with you as always. Gamataken nodded before bowing and returning to the summon world. Oi! Uro-sensei, Naruto called out to Jiraiya who was over at the small river, no doubt looking at the women who were playing there. Grinning Naruto used the Uroki no Jutsu to transform into Naruko, a female version of Naruto with long blonde hair done up in twin ponytails and a figure that could rival Tsunade. Walking behind Jiraiya Naruko put her hands over the white-haired pervert's eyes and pressed her ample bosom into his back, Jiraiya-sama. Why watch those girls when you can study me, 
Naruko said in a sultry and seductive voice that sent chills down Jiraiya's spine. I knew you would you come out to play sooner or later you little minx, Jiraiya said with a perverted grin and a large nose bleed as he turned around. Only to be disappointed as Naruto dispelled the transformation. Come on perv, Naruto said as he hooked a thumb over his shoulders pointing towards the palace. Time to go back, turning around Naruto started walking. Jiraiya caught up a moment later grumbling about disrespectful gakis not letting an old man get his looks in. Naruto frowned as another of the maids told Naruto that she had not seen Koyuki anywhere, it was not like her to be late for one of their dates. Deciding to question the person who was the most likely to see Koyuki last the blonde made his way towards the director's office, when he got there Naruto knocked on the door. He waited for several minutes and after receiving no answer he frowned before opening it. The entire office was empty with no trace of the man having even been in it yet, frowning Naruto made his way to the set. When he got there Naruto eyes widened, everyone was currently lying on the ground unconscious. Moving over to the director who was slumped in his chair, Naruto unrolled a scroll and unsealed several medical contents and a chemistry set. He took a small blood sample from the man and put it in a dropper, dropping it in a beaker with several chemicals in it. He stirred the contents until it was a light purple and then took out a special piece of paper containing a seal on the inside and unrolled it. The seal was another one of Naruto's inventions and was made to give him a diagnostic of any foreign substances in a person's body, using a sample of someone's blood and mixing it with chakra conductive ink that was normally used for sealing Naruto had been able to use this as a replacement for the diagnostics jutsu that Tsunade and other medics were capable of performing. Placing the blood on it he watched as the symbols for the seal began to move towards the blood sample, the ink coalesced into the center and started forming words listing off the different compounds that were found in the man one of which Naruto recognized as chloroform and another as a form of nerve gas, narrowing his eyes Naruto made his way to Koyuki's room. Smashing through the door the Naruto looked around the room and saw the small area near the mirror-slash-desk combo where Koyuki did her makeup was a bit of a mess with the chair knocked over and several makeup kits scattered around it. Walking over to it he channeled a small amount of Kyuubi's chakra into his nose, there were minute traces of chloroform in the air here as well. Naruto mind began to deduce what happened as he realized someone must have infiltrated the palace, snuck in chloroforming Koyuki either some time before or after letting a bomb of knockout gas in the set room. The blonde frowned knowing that sneaking into the palace would be a nearly impossible task, even for someone of Jiraiya or his caliber, meaning there's a traitor either living in the palace or Koyuki's court. Making several hand seals Naruto slammed his hands into the ground and summoned a small messenger toad, I want you to go to Jiraiya and tell him that someone has kidnapped Koyuki. Let him know that there is a traitor either within the palace or on the Haru no Kuni council and ask him to find out who it is, Naruto ordered without preamble. The toad realizing this was important nodded and went to find the toad senin. Naruto used his enhanced senses again to see if there was anything that would help determine who the attacker was, hmm. There is a faint trace of earth. This left several possibilities but one of them stood out to Naruto the most. Crouching down similar to a bloodhound Naruto began to sniff out the source of the smell. Koyuki woke up with a groan, she opened her eyes blearily trying to get the faint blurriness out of her vision. Blinking a few times as she looked around, finding herself in what looked like one of the abandoned factories where Dodo had built his war machines. She tried to move a hand to her face but soon found them to be bound, her eyes widened as she tried to get out only to find that she was having no such luck. Looking at herself she found that she was tied to a chair that was bolted to the floor, her ankles were bound to it and her hands were tied around the back. She tried to wiggle her arms and loosen her bindings so she could get free. That won't work, Koyuki eyes widened as she looked up to see a man with scraggly black hair and green eyes grinning at her. That ninja wire is strong enough to hold even the most powerful shinobi, a little spoiled princess like you will have no luck escaping those. Koyuki glared at the man, knowing that he was the one who most likely kidnapped her, who are you? What do you want with me? Onato paused as he seemed to think about answering before he shrugged, I suppose it doesn't matter if I tell you. It's not like you're gonna live long anyway, you're just a means to an end for me, I'm simply using you to get to the person I wanna kill. The person you wanna kill? Koyuki questioned as she studied the man, he was definitely a shinobi that much was clear. Except he didn't show any Hideo 8, meaning he was either a missing ninja or was trying not to implicate his country. And who is it you wanna kill? She asked, determined to get as much information as possible. Onato gave her a grin that sent chills down her spine, why I'm gonna kill your boyfriend of course. Naruto. Koyuki breathed as her eyes widened. That's right, Onato laughed, I'm finally gonna get my revenge by killing the son of that man. Then I'm gonna kill you. 
He walked up to her and Koyuki began to fight with her bindings even more. It's a shame I gotta kill you though, you're quite the specimen. He trailed a finger along her jaw but was forced to pull it back when Koyuki tried to bite it, ha ha. And feisty too it seems. Hmm. Perhaps after this is over I'll have some fun before I kill you. Koyuki shuddered at the tone in the man's voice, it was a tone that had insanity mixed in with lust, obviously this man had lost his mind a long time ago. Onedo. Koyuki turned her head to see a man running towards them, he's here. Good, very good, Onedo said with a smile, why don't you and the others go and welcome our guest? The man left and Onedo turned to Koyuki with a rag, realizing what it was the female daimyo began to struggle. The black-haired man merely laughed as he put the rag over her face, watching as Koyuki's eyes rolled into the back of her head. Naruto looked at the large building that the scent had led him to, the place was up in one of the more mountainous regions of Haru no Kuni. The building itself was a very industrialized factory with several smokestacks and what looked like a large furnace or smelting factory. The blonde Namikaze heir knew what it was, back when Dodo had been the daimyo he had several of these places made. They were large factories that turned out numerous types of weapons and vehicles, it was here that the chakra armor, kunai launchers and blimps were built. Naruto knew that Koyuki still had a few of them going to help build up Haru's defenses, but this one was obviously abandoned for some reason or another. Likely Koyuki had not even known about it meaning this one had made something that Dodo wanted kept secret. Pausing at the entrance Naruto looked up, chances were high they were expecting him to either use the main or back entrances or one of the windows on the upper levels. It was likely they would have several traps waiting for him at those locations, that meant that the most efficient way to get inside would be do enter some where they would not expect him to. Moving around the side Naruto stopped when he estimated that he was halfway between the front and back entrances, getting out a brush Naruto began to write on the wall. The seal he was using was called an intangibility seal and like the name suggests it allowed a solid object to become intangible allowing people and other objects to pass through it unhindered. This was done by having the seal affect the atomic particles that all matter was created from and making them become loose from each other, when that happened one could pass through a solid object as if it was water. Jiraiya had told him it was one of his more ingenious seals and would be a boon for infiltration and espionage missions. Once he finished writing Naruto channeled some chakra into the seal to activate them, placing his hands on the wall the blonde watched as a ripple went through the wall, stopping where Naruto had placed absorption and dispersion seal to make sure that the intangibility effect was confined to a certain area. Once Naruto's hand sunk into the wall he began to walk through, feeling the particles move out of the way of his mass. When he was all the way through Naruto activated his invisibility jutsu and started to search the area, making sure that he created a map within his mind. The place he was in was definitely a factory of some kind, several assembly lines were set up in a linear path inside the room. Looking at it Naruto saw what looked like molds for the chakra armor Naruto saw Dodo wearing, making Naruto suspicious that this had been the place Dodo's completed version of chakra armor came from. Refocusing his thoughts Naruto crept through the room and made it into a hallway, deciding to head left Naruto walked silently along the wall. He channeled chakra into his ears hoping that he could make out some kind of sound, while he could not hear anything he eventually found himself reaching the end of the hall. At the end there was a large set of steel doors that were partially opened, if Naruto's internal map was correct this was somewhere near where the back entrance was located. Making a cage Bushin Naruto had it open the door in case of traps, when none were forthcoming the clone dispelled and Naruto walked in. The first thing he noticed was that the room was large, it looked like some kind of practice range for jutsu or weapons. There was an area with targets made to look like people, most of them were destroyed or had rusted and broken from disuse. On the opposite side were several lockers that Naruto was now positive stored weapons and that chakra armor, this place was most likely where they did testing on the products they built here. The second thing that Naruto noticed was that Koyuki was here, she was bound together on the wall opposite from him. Her legs were wrapped together and the sleeves of her arms were pinned to the wall with kunai making her look like she was on a crucifix, Naruto narrowed his eyes when he recognized the ninja wire as 0.8 grade composite silk steel a type that Iwagakur had been known to use during the Third Great Ninja War. He started running towards her only for his ninja instincts to kick in at the last second, rolling to the left as several kunai and shuriken came at him. Finishing his roll he moved onto his feet and realized he was surrounded. Taking a millisecond he analyzed his opponents, there were six of them, most looked rather plain, wearing standard ninja clothing with no identification marks nor did they have on Hideo 8s. However Naruto knew this could mean anything he immediately disclosed the idea that this was a ninja mercenary unit. Aside from the fact that there were very few ninja mercenaries the only units he knew actually existed were Akatsuki, who was considered a mercenary group right now. 
The fact that this was also an apparent trap for him rather than Koyuki added to that fact, since while it could be a unit sent by one of his enemies it was also not likely. His only enemies were Akatsuki and Iwa, Akatsuki would never hand off the capturing of Jinchuriki to others and Iwa would rather kill him themselves. Naruto looked at the smirking man in front of him as he began running a mental checklist of all the people he knew or recognized from somewhere, eventually Naruto hit pay dirt. Onedo Kazuchi, a rank ninja of Iwagakor also known as Iron Fist Onedo. Specializes in using the stone and iron particles in the earth and combining them with your arms to give your arms a powerful super strength, similar to that of Tsunade of the Senen. Onedo's smirk widened, just what I would expect from the son of that man. But your knowledge won't save you here, if you give up I may let your girlfriend spend some quality time with me before I kill her. Naruto snarled as he charged at the man completely forgetting everything around him, the only thought running through his mind was that he was going to enjoy hanging this man up by his intestines. Instincts kicked in again and it was only his hard-earned reflexes that saved him from being impaled by several earth spikes that shot up in front of Onedo, jumping into the air the blonde shinobi flipped over the Iwa Jonin and threw several shuriken at him. Ninpa, shuriken cage bushin no jutsu. Ninja art, shuriken shadow clone jutsu. Without words or hand seals the five shuriken became fifty as they head for the black-haired man, Onedo's eyes widened for a moment before he jumped out of the way and pulled out a kunai to deflect what he was incapable of dodging. Naruto charged at him with two kunai in hand as he tried to impale the man through the skull. Before he could get to close two of the ninja came in one going with a high kick and the other hoping to take Naruto out at the knees. Ducking under the kick from the first ninja Naruto placed his left hand on the ground as he pushed himself in the air just a centimeter above the foot swipe, grabbing the foot from the man who did the high kick as he spun. Using his impressive physical strength and momentum lifted the man up by his ankle as he flipped, spinning the man around as he landed on the ground and slammed enemy ninja into the concrete surface with a loud crack, as small spider webs appeared underneath the man where the cement gave under the power of Naruto's assault. Rolling to the left Naruto dodged an incoming kick, twisting his body 180 degrees the blonde came up on his feet and blocked a kunai strike to the neck. Channeling wind chakra into his kunai Naruto sliced through the enemy's kunai allowing Naruto to close the distance on the now wide-eyed ninja, smashing both palms into the man's solar plexus and sent him flying back, who crashed into and through the wall. Spinning on his heels Naruto grabbed a kunai that was sent to impale him and threw it back towards his thrower with wind chakra added to it, the kunai went straight through the Iwa ninja's left lung as if it was mere air causing the man to scream violently. Flipping himself backwards Naruto was able to dodge an Iwa ninja who had attempted to impale him. Going through a few hand signs Naruto's cheeks bulged as he smashed a hand on his stomach. Few Uten, Rinkudan. Wind release, drilling air bullet. A large ball of compressed air shot from Naruto's mouth and smashed into the man's head, not bothering to even look at the gore he created Naruto landed on the ground. Doten, Doryu Taiga. Earth release, earth flow river. Naruto cursed as he found himself slipping along the ground as a large river of mud smashed into him. Doten, Doryusu. Earth release, earth and rising spears. Several spears shot out of the mud river and impaled Naruto in various vital areas, only for Naruto to disappear in a burst of smoke. The real Naruto appeared right behind the man who had done the jutsu with a spinning ball of chakra in his hand, smashing the Rasengan into the man's back causing the man to scream as his flak jacket was ripped to shreds along with the flesh and muscles located in his back. Taking several deep breaths Naruto stood up and looked around, Five of the six ninja who had attacked him were either dead or unconscious. However Onedo was missing, looking over to where Koyuki was Naruto narrowed his eyes at seeing her gone too. Seeing the door on the other side partially open Naruto charged through it and outside as he followed the scent that he recognized as Koyuki. Damn that boy! Onedo cursed as he carried a still unconscious Koyuki over his shoulder, he had been so sure that they would be able to kill that blasted Namikaze if they caught him off guard. Perhaps he should have tried to take Jonin with him instead of Chunin, Maybe then he would have had a better shot but he had been impatient. Well doesn't matter I'll get him next time, he looked at the young woman over his shoulder and smirked, and I still got her. I think I will have a little fun with her before I kill her, then I'll tell that blasted. Onedo. Turning his head Onedo cursed as he saw Naruto running straight for him and gaining fast, channeling as much chakra as he was able to he increased his speed. Seeing this Naruto threw off his cloak and increased his own speed, leaving the cloak behind to smash into the ground and create a large crater. Naruto found himself swiftly closing in on the man he was going to beat into a coma, but Onedo still seemed to have a few tricks up his sleeve as he threw several makibishi, nails used to distract an opponent, on the ground behind him, this forced Naruto to jump in the air slowing his forward momentum and allowing Onedo to gain some distance. 
When Naruto finally caught up to the Iwa Jonin to see the man standing at the edge of a cliff face, Onedo spun around and smirked as he looked at Naruto. I may not be able to kill you right now, Onedo said as his smirk turned into a large grin that seemed to scream insanity. But I'm at least gonna make sure that I hurt in some way. Naruto's eyes widened as Onedo threw Koyuki off the cliff, now it's your turn to feel the pain of losing someone you love. Ha ha oof. The man's laughing rant was cut off as Naruto smashed his fist in the man's gut with enough force to send him flying off the cliff as well. Not wasting a moment Naruto threw himself headfirst over the ledge, channeling wind chakra in front of him to cut through the air to decrease the wind resistance around him and allow him to speed up. Naruto caught up with Koyuki and wrapped an arm around her waist before flashing to Onedo who he had placed a Hiraishin seal on when he hit him. Creating a cage bushin to grab Onedo Naruto threw a kunai high into the air, both Naruto's flashed to it and Naruto re-threw the kunai so it was back to where he had jumped. Flashing one more time the clone Naruto dropped Onedo and dispelled, before the man could even think to get away Naruto stomped his face into the ground with a foot, lifting it up several more times and brought it down not stopping until there was a sizable indent in the shape of Onedo's face as the now unconscious man bleed from his mouth, nose and ears. Sighing Naruto looked at Koyuki who was still completely out of it, readjusting her so that her head was resting on his shoulder Naruto created another clone to tie Onedo up and bring him with them. With luck Jiraiya would be able to interrogate the man and find out if this was Iwa trying to kill him, or if the man had acted on his own. A fat and fairly short man with cropped brown hair and dark black eyes was running through the hall of his mansion as if the hounds of hell were after him, this could be likened to the truth only instead of hounds it was a group of samurai. The man eventually made it to his office and bared the doors shut, pushing his desk and several other large objects in the way in an attempt to hold them so he could use his secret escape route. Moving over to his fireplace he twisted one of the statues on it and watched with an impatient air as the fireplace began to rotate. Only to see a tall man with spiky white hair, the fat man turned around to try and get away, only to feel a sharp pain in the back of his neck just as the samurai burst through the door. XXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXX
It was both wise and a good tactical move as far as politics went and would put the Sandaime Tsuchikage in his pocket since the old man would be smart enough to realize that it was only because of Naruto that his village would not be destroyed. This assassination fiasco should also keep their ninja in check, since they just officially not only failed but would have to be weary of Konoha finding out. Clapping his hands together Jiraiya smirked at the two of them, now that all of this boring stuff is out of the way I've come to tell you that we will be filming again. Naruto sighed, somehow I knew you would bring that up, he looked over at Koyuki who shrugged, I suppose it can't be helped. Of course we've got to finish this movie, Jiraiya shouted as he pumped his fist in the air causing Naruto to groan. Lnoki looked out of the window in his office as he stared at the buildings below, his current mind going through the conversation he had with Onedo a few months ago. He had not seen the man again afterwards and was beginning to get worried, it was well known that his hatred for the Kirov Senko urine far deeper than anyone else's. That he had not shown up for a mission or anything like he usually did in the past few months was worrying. A knock at the door interrupted his thoughts. Enter. He ordered. The door opened and in walked one of his messenger ninja who had a scroll in his hands, sir this scroll came from Haru no Kuni. Lnoki frowned as he took the scroll, Iwa had not had any form of relation since they stopped exporting coal from them decades ago. What could possibly be their reason for sending them a message? You may go, Lnoki ordered the messenger who bowed and left. The old Tsuchikage unrolled the scroll and began to read the contents, his eyes widening with each sentence. Dear Sandaime Tsuchikage Dono. I regret to inform you that as of several days ago your ninja Onedo along with five Chunin level shinobi were killed after an attempted assassination on my persons. Because of this I will be requesting 1 million yen both to my account as well as another 1 million to the account of Koyuki Kazaana for Onedo's kidnapping and attempted murder of the Haru no Kuni Daimyo. If you do not comply with this demand I will be forced to let out the information that you attempted to murder not just a shinobi of Konoha but also a Daimyo. However should you do this I am willing to overlook what has happened here so long as you never attempt something similar and learn to keep your shinobi on a better leash. From Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze Lnoki sat back in his chair as he felt his shoulder slump, this was a complete disaster. Not only would he have to pay all of that money in order to keep this from getting out and destroying his village by starting a war, but he also had to let the families of those men know that because of a man's lust for revenge these people died. The only saving grace which really was not a saving grace was that the person who was attacked would forget and drop all charges so long as he was able to hold up his end of the bargain. He closed his eyes as he pinched the bridge of his large nose, getting out several sheets of paper he began to write letters for the families of the deceased. XXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXX
The video was of Koyuki and Naruto having sex for four straight days, several days later the movie was found by someone else who decided to put it on the market. Many males ended up buying the movie only for all of them to die as well, thus became what was known as the Great Icha Icha Massacre.